you know, you've come down to New Balance Nationals before multiple times, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I remember my first my first time here. I I actually never ran at the New Balance indoor meet uh as a high schooler, but I did the outdoors. But when I turned pro, I came here, and it was crazy. Like the energy from all the, the young athletes running, uh, just the connections and everything. It was, it was smooth. Like I had a good time. Yeah. You need like security detail going around here with all the high schoolers. I'm sure like the you know, the sixties getting ready to line up, if they knew that you were in the building, like you'd be a distraction oh, probably. No, no. It's all it's all love. You know, like I, I like being around the kids and, and the young and the young uh the young athletes coming up. So to be able to like talk to them and trying to give them some advice on how to deal with probably going into college or how to further along their career throughout high school, it's it's always love for me. We're going to dive into your high school career, advice that you have for the younger athletes, but we're actually joined right now oh, man. by my, my Kyle's new, new favorite, my new favorite high school 800 guy, Cade Flat here, uh, just won the 800 and number three high school all-time armory prep record, 148 from the gun, just dominant, and then just seemed to keep going and going faster as it was uh, picking up. So, Kate, thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. What's with the uh, the UFC getup? I we just checked out your Twitter account. You retweet a lot of UFC. So, is it just like a UFC mentality that you're bringing to track? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm big into me and my dad. Uh, I don't really keep up with basketball or football like those sports. You know, I'll watch them if they're on with my friends. But uh, big into like MMA, UFC, and stuff. Uh, and you know, got got the world champ fit on right now. So you're bringing that world champ energy. But, uh, yeah, so big into UFC, you know, that's the sport. That's the sport. So this is your first time in New York, I hear, right? You want yes, to, where are you from? So I'm from Benton, Kentucky. It's four hours west of Lexington where Kentucky starts to get real small. It's like a town of 7,000, something like that. It's tiny. Um, but it's a great community out there in Marshall County. So. And first time in New York, what's your impression? What do you first, think? It's big. It's surreal. <laughs> Walking around, like, the city just doesn't stop. You know, like, I'm two hours from Nashville, and that's, like, a big city. You know, to us. So, so I'm looking over. I was on the Empire State Building, and you see like all the kind of, I guess they're neighboring cities, or it's all part of the same city. But yeah. at least South Carolina, it's just like, dude, that's bigger than Nashville, where I live. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it's surreal. It's surreal. And it was cool coming into the Armory. I know it was your first time. You said it was, you know, most famous indoor track in the world. Mm -hmm. What was the experience like? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, just like I walked in, and you see like the Prefontaine. Um, like all the all the posters and stuff, all the history here. Uh, of course, it's you know glad to win, glad to run a historic time. But you know, I think I could have ran 147 if I didn't have to climb up those stairs all day. <laughs> <laughs> so right, help so me you, about it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're a track fan because as soon as you walked in and you saw Trayvon, you were pumped. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I, me and my dad. So we don't you know watch everything, but we watch uh, you know the big ones. And we can get them on TV and stuff. But yeah, we know all, know all the top guys for sure. Here's your chance. I mean, you get to sit next to him. You're an Olympian, two time like. Any sort of big questions that you have for someone like him? Big question. About how he's gone about his career or anything, yeah. He's yeah. pretty good in high school, too. Yeah. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I guess what I'd say is uh, how, so like, you know, being in those big races. Like, I was in a big race today, but it wasn't near, you know, it wasn't going to the Olympics, like, make or break. Like, what's that What's that pressure like? How do you deal with that? Do you feel pressure or are you just you confident and you walk around knowing you're going to win? Man, it's, it's intense. Like, the feeling that you get, especially when you are, like, a top contender, like, maybe, like, top five in the world or top 10 in the world or top five in the U.S., it's it's always going to be a lot of pressure and it's going to be always a lot of expectations. So I think the biggest thing is trying to hone in on what your abilities are uh, and how to uh, prepare to your best ability. Uh, even even through, like, high school, like, coming to races like this, like, you got to think in this field you are a top contender. So you got to think, like, okay, how can I overcome any anxiety or nervousness to be able to perform at the best ability? So for myself, I know I think of a lot of times, like I use my, my injuries as like my motivation. Mm -hmm. So finding like why you do what you do uh, and continuously put that as your forefront, you know, and understand like, okay, you deserve to be here, what got you here, and continuously to be motivated by that and, and let that drive you throughout these races. Gotcha. Great. So after winning a big race, you know, let's say the Olympic trials or world champs, like you're buzzing, you know, that's his feeling right now. How do you, I guess, enjoy that while still looking towards the future? I'm going to be honest with y'all. Uh, I haven't learned that lesson of enjoying the moment until after my uh, recent injury. Uh, I sat down in 2019 before I had changed coaches and really – like, I had a conversation with myself of, like, understanding, like, man, if I get another opportunity at being back running, like, enjoy the moment. Even, like, you know, when you get on this pro level, you go to, like, all these beautiful places in the world. Like, before, I would just, like, go to the meet, 
stay in my room, race, go back to my room on a flight the next day to somewhere else where a lot of the athletes would, like, be out and about sightseeing, doing all this stuff. And I realized, like, what we do, you only get one opportunity, you know. So when you have that success, like, dwell, like dwell in that moment, like, soak it all in, live in the moment because you may not get another chance. Like, that was the big scare for me when I got injured uh, recently. I was like, man, like, this is a big thing, so I may not come back to the sport. And it made me regret all the times where I went all these places and I didn't do or didn't see a lot of the things. So definitely take in every opportunity, like the full, like not just racing. Like you said, like being able to see all this stuff and all the you know, memorabilia and the history behind it, like soak it all in because a lot of people don't get this opportunity. Trayvon, what was the moment for you, I guess, for him coming from Kentucky to, to New York, like bright lights, big city, every, like it feels overwhelming. You're just like, oh, my man, like this is not too I'm, overwhelming. Yeah, he seemed yeah. to be OK. With yeah. It. <laughs> but for you, I guess, when was that moment where you're like, man, there's just so much more to what I'm used to, my community, my like and that you realize how big not just New York is, but not New York, but in general, like the world. Yeah. So. Just, just like him, like when I first came to New York, I was like, man, this is this is crazy. Like really the concrete jungle like they talk about, you know, <laughs> like my small city, St. Pete, back in Florida. It's like I ain't never think I'd see that. But, the, man, when I went to Beijing in 2015, like being in the bird's nest is, oh, my gosh. I'm talking about the people. Like literally when I, they got a, a part of the video, if you watch my race in the prelims, they caught me walking out. I'm just like looking like what in the world like, I ain't never seen so many people in the stadium I'm talking about the lights you got all the big names like Bolt, Gat like everybody Tyson all these guys like you just like man like it was funny I was just standing on my blocks like still looking at the people like you know I'm like man I gotta soak all this in like this is crazy you know so that was like the biggest thing for me to be able to be in such a historic stadium uh, with all those people the lights you know the cameras and everything it was like yo this is I ain't never think like this was gonna be for me type you know type energy. So uh, yeah, it was that was a big moment for me. So Kate, you, you just told us that you're going to Ole Miss next year. Pretty exciting. Oh, yeah. So Trey had a pretty good high school career, and then also obviously a good college career. Uh, I guess you know that transition. Are you nervous about making that transition? I uh, I no. think you got someone who might be able to give you a little bit of advice on that <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm just excited to get out there. You know, compete. Um, you know. Red's my favorite color anyway, so I'm, I'm really excited of what they got going on the program, so I'm just excited. I'm not nervous, not worried, so. What do you remember, I guess, when you made that jump? You, you, it's a totally different program, and, like, I mean, it, everything from, like, having to make new friends, you know, getting to know the other people on the team, knowing your place on the team. What What do you remember about those first couple weeks of freshman year? Uh, one thing I was saying, I'll also get this advice to you as well. Uh, don't be little yourself, and – Going there with the mentality of wanting to be great. I think that's what separated me when I first stepped on campus. Like I told my coach, you know, especially him, like love him to death. Like he, he had so much faith in me to bring me to Baylor. Like I told him, I, like I want to be great. Like I don't want to just come here and be like another name that come through the NCAA's and then nobody remembers. And I told my weight coach, like I was like, look, like I want to be an NCAA champion my freshman year. Like I want to break that barrier. Uh, and every day, like I worked, like I worked hard. Oh, and I already came into it with kind of a chip on my shoulder because people like, oh, he ran a win day to nine seconds. He can't really make it, you know, legit in college. So I had that fire to prove people wrong. So when you go into college, man, I know everybody like, oh, you want the college experience and this and this. <laughs> I, I promise you, nothing is better than going pro and traveling the world and seeing, <laughs> seeing all these locations. So, like, you can have fun in college, you know, we'll do everything. But, man, go, go into the NCAAs wanting to wreck shit. Wanted to make a statement and make a brand for yourself, and that was the thing that I went in with the mentality of like I wanted to be a nine-second runner going into college. I wanted to dominate and be like the greatest. I wanted to be remembered in this sport. So I'll say definitely take it serious and just have that mentality of wanting to be great. As soon as you get in, like don't let nobody to be like oh man you need to chill in like man going there with wanting to be great, knowing that like yeah I want to get an education, but also I'm just trying to set a stone for later on in my life as well. So I think, yeah, uh, you would enjoy his Instagram comment that he just left. So we posted a photo of him, you know, running the time. I, we said, track is heating up. Kate Flat throws down 148 to move into number three on all-time list. Only Josh Hoey and Will Sumner, their times are faster. He commented, tell them I jogged that. And it's like, I, I like that. Oh I like that mentality. Oh so where where does that come from, sort of that beast within? You know, and... You know, I'm, I'm a real confident guy. You know, I walk around, 
you know, all, all weekend long, you know, my dad, I look in the mirror, and we, we, you know, sit there, my family, everybody, you know, it's like, I go walk around like I'm the best, like I'm the best one here, like, uh, you know, I'm out, out of the league, um, you know, bad intentions come today, um, <laughs> so, and, and I think putting that out there, stuff like that, making track exciting, I think there's so many people who just show up and, you know, no one was, no one cared about MMA, UFC before there was, you know, people who out, people with personalities involved. You know, and I think track and field, like, you know, if I'm better than you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know, and you know, let's let's get a race going, let's get a rivalry. You know, Any, anyone you want to call those. out for the outdoor season? Calling out, oh, you know, we'll Sumner right into the Sumner doesn't live too far. You know, Nashville, <laughs> Nashville's right in between us, uh, but uh, that kid's fast. Um, I think I think me and him get together. We can we can run. Have you gone head to head at all? Never. Sorry, what? Have you gone head to head against? No, he. Uh, I went. He was at the UK. I've been around him at meets before, but like he'll do the two and the four when I'm an eight, and uh, you know that's. Oh, that's, that's you're saying you're a big mileage guy too. You come at it, you know, you do some mile type training. What type of mileage are we running these yeah, days? Yeah, so I'm hitting about you know 10, 11 miles a week right now. <laughs> uh, you know, me and me and my coach, me and Coach Andrew Johnson, we're uh, you know all about being under trained, like kind of not overworked. You know, you say, like going out here and running a one forty eight eight six. People, I think you know. We're probably starting to think, oh, he's gonna be burnt out before outdoor season. You know, I'm he's, feeling pretty good hard, about your future after 11 working. miles a you know, week. Look yeah. how hard he's working out now, but I'm really not. You know, this this is just the beginning. So this is my second 800, third time running on a bank track. So, so all right, so Trey, you wanted to be a pro and Olympian when you were younger. Do you have that same sort of aspiration? Is that oh, the goal? Oh yeah, you know, I'm I'm pretty good in school, but if I can, you know, stay away from like a real normal job as long as I can. You know? <laughs> so I'm I'm here to work and do what he said, travel the world. Be so. Trayvon's used to people uh, calling him out or just in terms of just like fair races, challenging people. Between the two of you, what what do you think is the fair distance for the two of you guys to show down? Uh-oh. No. Uh-oh. <laughs> 500? Fair, fair distance? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. You got it. I ain't no. I'm not even dabbling. What's your four? Nothing under, nothing under five. <laughs> nothing under <laughs> five, I don't think. What? Nothing under five. No. Nothing over 200. Yeah. <laughs> over 200. Yeah, that'd be fair. We that'd did fair. see the 200 at uh, the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. And, I mean, you ran great, but it does look like yeah, it you takes a little while to recover. Yeah, look, six years, man. <laughs> it's been six years since I did that, and it was tough. But, you know, I, I take it into consideration. Like, I look at a lot of guys, you know, uh, who's in the pro rankings who, you know, I look like fences. Like, I look at someone like Noah Lyles. Like, last year he ran at that same beat with 20.8, and he finished it with 19.5. So for me, I went into that race like, okay, like I guess we had a good start. I just gotta, you know, keep getting stronger. Yeah, Kate, I love asking high schoolers this question. You know, besides Trey, who are some of your favorites out there? And if you want to keep the New Balance athletes, like we totally <laughs> get that. It'd be, no, you don't have. You're to. talking just track athletes. Yeah, just yeah. who are your favorite pro track athletes out um, there? Track athletes, uh, you know, Craig Ingles, every high school, every <laughs> high school guys, you know, one of, one of favorite. Uh, he's awesome. You know, another personality. I don't know why I can't think of his name right now. He's a sprinter, Nike. I literally follow him on Instagram. I love the guy. Uh, he's like Fred Curley. Fred Curley, yeah. 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 All right. I don't know why I couldn't think of his name, but uh, I, I love his mentality. You know, his company, you know, the world hashtag world record every every post. So, yeah, I, I dig that. Uh, I dig his personality. Yeah. All right. Well, now awesome. we see where you got it from. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, Cade, thanks so much for, for joining us. This has been a blast. Go out there, enjoy more of New York City. Have you had the pizza yet or anything? Yeah, I, I did have the pizza What'd Friday you think? when I came here. I thought, thought it was pretty good. I don't know. And that's the thing. I just don't know if it was the right spot or not. It was the... I don't know what's going on. He, he's like the pizza king. He has a bunch of pictures like Adam Sandler and like Donald Trump and everybody pizza on his king. wall. The pizza king. I don't know. I don't know the pizza king. I don't know. I don't, I don't know where it is. That's what it, that's what it Any says. Any New Yorkers in here know the pizza king? He has like a picture with Pitbull. <laughs> yeah. He has like a picture with like Pitbull and Usher and stuff. Like he's got all these famous people. You go to enough pizza spots, that's every pizza spot yeah. in New York. <laughs> yeah, it's like presidents. I was like, this guy, this guy doesn't. So what else is on your list while you're here? Top of any uh, buildings? Yeah, I went to Empire State Building Friday Already? too. Uh, yeah, so we, we got here Friday morning, so we had a busy day Friday. Yesterday kind of just hung out. We came to the Armory and got all my like New Balance stuff, um, just checked the place out, got familiar with it. And then, uh, I don't know, today we fly out at like 4, so that's pretty much it. Awesome. Well, go make the most of the rest of your time here in New York and wishing you all the best. We'll be sure to see you during outdoor season and beyond that at Ole Miss. So yes, congrats on, on Big great fans, day. big fans. Uh-huh. Yeah. Awesome. I think we're going to bring in the girls' 800 champ next. She's in the building. Roisin Willis has joined us. Roisin, come on in. We'll replace Kate over here. Just 800 stud to 800 stud. A 2 by 800 relay of dreams. 
Hey, Roisin, how are you feeling? Pretty good. <laughs> so was this, is this it for you for indoor season? Yes. I, well, actually, Wisconsin just starts their indoor season now. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I technically will have some local meets um, till April, mid-April, but this is it for the big championship races. Yeah, and so far, what a season it's been. National record, and then today... You get the win, 206-81. A little bit of a tactical effort, but you, you led it from the front. What was what was the plan for, for today? Yeah, just to go up to the front and lead it the whole way and control the race. Um, played out a little bit differently time-wise than I was thinking, but overall really happy to get the win. Trayvon, you hear a time like 206 for a girl's 800. Like, what, what goes through your head? Uh, you know, being around a lot of women 800 runners, especially at Baylor, you yeah. know, when I started to lead Miller, like, it's – like hearing that, like you're on a good path to run some fast times, definitely. Yeah. So today with uh, Sophia in the race, like of of course, like the big point has been that you got you two love going against each other head to head every single time. You bring out the best in each other. Where, I mean, it's evident now. The two of you are sitting at number one and number two on the all time list. I mean, were, could you hear her? I guess like right behind you for the first couple laps. It wasn't until like the bell that you really started to make a little bit of ground on her. Yeah, I mean, I did feel her on my shoulder at one point, but um, I didn't really hear anything the whole time, just people in the stands. But, um, yeah, I felt pretty comfortable, and so I just, like, with the 100 meters to go, I had a little bit left in me, so I just, like, let it rip. And it's my last high school indoor race, so leave it all out on the track. What would you make of the whole atmosphere here today? Oh, it's great. I love this meet. Um, definitely good to get back to, like, these exciting races. Um, lost it for a little bit, but um, really good to be back. So two flat, you know, you've done that now a number of times. Is that sub two? Like, is that written on your mirror anywhere? You know, <laughs> every day when you wake up, that's the first thing you see? No, I mean, honestly, I just want to, like, enjoy the process. Like, I don't want to push it. Like, t I think the two-minute barrier is, like, a very big one in the 800 meters. So I just want to enjoy the process. Um, and when it happens, it happens. I'm not going to push it. Um, today I thought maybe that could be an opportunity to get it, but it just wasn't the day. So I'm um, just waiting for outdoors and see what happens. Yeah. So a day like today, how does it compare to if we want to remind the people last time that she competed here, she beat a thing Mo. So how does that sort of compare in terms of just today's Wait, win? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she beat a thing Mo. <laughs> <laughs> People didn't really know you at the time. That was kind of yeah. like the big coming out, right? So how does that compare to something like today? I mean, that <laughs> that race three year, two years ago, three years ago, was just like a whole blur in my mind. Like, it was just such a shock. Um, like, nothing felt real until I hit the finishing tape. Um, <laughs> Trey's, like, busy <laughs> after that. <laughs> I'm like, yo, she's like, a thing is cold, you know? So I'm like, what? <laughs> Um, but honestly, yeah, I just like today I just had fun out there and like it was nice to I won it in a very different way, which is kind of fun. Um, like three years ago, I came from behind and like passed her at the very end. And this year I led the whole way, which I think was, you know, really good for me to have the confidence to go out there in a national race and just lead it from wire to wire. So how do you feel about just sort of like the many different ways that you can go about winning a race? Like you're comfortable leading from the front, like you said, you can tr you trust your, your kick. Is there a preference between between the two? Um, I definitely like coming up from behind. Um, but honestly, I don't, in some of my races, I don't have an option. Like if I want to go, I have to go and I have to have the confidence to go out there. Um, but yeah, I like to switch it around. I feel like this season I've done a lot of different types of strategies and I think that's good because you have to be prepared for anything. What have you made of, like, some of the other races here this weekend? Oh, it's been awesome. Got some of my Stanford teammates coming up next in the miles, so super excited to watch them. And um, it's just been great to see how well all the high schoolers have been running this weekend. Trey, do you, do you have any advice to impart on someone who's about to go off to Stanford? You know, especially the balance between the academic side of things and competing at such a high level. Like, how did you make that? I'm still... About <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, like I can tell. Like, that's yeah. the thing. I don't, like, Do you have any advice for yeah, Trey what? that maybe I like show up alone? So <laughs> <laughs> I need some advice or something. So in terms of uh, the like balancing the the academics and uh, at Baylor, how'd you do it? Man, uh, I definitely say make sure you stay on top of the grades. Obviously, you have to have a certain like GPA going in to be able to compete. So definitely stay on top of that. With college, it hits you fast. Like. It's, it's not something that you can fully prepare for. Um, 
anybody can, you know with the school can tell you that uh, when I went into Baylor I was, like I came from a little different situation my education level wasn't Stanford high but <laughs> once I got in and I got adjusted I was like okay I motivated myself like look I don't want to just be an athlete like I want to have an education as well so when I got in I'm with tutors all the time to make sure that I'm up on everything when it comes to the curriculum so just definitely go in there understanding like this is a job you know I think most people go in there and just trying to wing it see how things go go in there and understand like hey you wake up you go to school, then you go to practice, but you got to balance all that. It's all about time management, so don't let nothing get in the way of that. Like, go to class, study, stay on top of it, get ahead, so you can get time to start competing, you won't be behind. I think for athletes, a lot of times we get behind because we thinking, oh, I just want to run, or I just want to do my sport, and forget that without the education, you can't compete. Yeah. So definitely get in and get on top of the education part of it first and get ahead, so then when it comes time to competing, one, you already have built a relationship with your professors, too. I'm going to let you know this now. Some professors do not care that you're an athlete. So <laughs> make sure you stay on top of the education side because you don't want to get behind because literally a lot of them, you know, tenure, they like, look, I don't care that you're a good athlete. Like, you still got to do the work. So definitely go in there with the mentality of this is my job. I'm here to be better at track. I'm here to be better at my, you know, like, gain education. And, yeah, you'll be all right. Do you know you're going to study yet or what do you want to do? I'm going to. Definitely, like, my first quarter at Stanford, just, like, get adjusted to everything. Um, and I won't be racing, like, cross-country or anything like that. So just trying to get adjusted. Adjusting to the weather, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wisconsin to California. <laughs> it's a great trade-off. Yes. <laughs> so, Rasheen, yesterday we did, we did an interview, and you shared with me that, like, rap is your pre-race pump-up. So today, oh gosh. before this race, what were you listening to? <laughs> like the camera's zooming in, like, like no pressure. Like, I feel like it's intimidating. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, um, probably, definitely Drake. Okay. A little bit of Kanye. I don't know if that's a controversial answer, but no. I don't know. I, I just have like a general playlist on my watch and I just play it every time. Love Honestly, it. Honestly, kind of zoning out the music. I was just like trying to get in my zone. Same playlist that like has gotten you into the national records or like yes. did you switch yes. it up? Yes. Okay, cool. Trey, right, what's your playlist? What's your playlist? So this is actually funny. When I when I ran at Milrose, like, and you know, at first we was like running down like the back stretch of the bank. And I know a lot of people probably was like wondering like, oh man, what are you listening? He seemed kind of hype. I was actually listening to gospel music. Really? So yeah. I was like, I actually listening to gospel music. Uh, when I'm warming up, oh yeah, like I'm listening to like Kevin Gates, <laughs> NBA Youngboy. But when I'm getting ready to race, I listen to like a lot of gospel music. Like, cause obviously everybody who know me, like I'm very spiritual. Yeah. So when I get on the track, like I like to just hone in and, and, and have that relationship with me and God and let him carry me through the race. It's funny. Some people get really hyped up and super excited and they're like, you know, you can run through a brick wall before the race. But I, personally, in my career, I always want to be like you, like as calm as possible. Like, I don't, I know when the gun goes off, there's not going to be any issues with yeah. like getting that adrenaline going. Yeah, sure. In a place like this, when they play music on the, you know, for, for the track, like, can you hear any, like the song that's playing and do you feed off of it or not really? I, I don't know if I heard it while I was running. Yeah. I think I asked you that too. Yeah, like no, you I really, didn't. you zone out. You're just yeah. focused on the race. Matter, yeah. You just and, hear a lot of noise. Yeah. 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 And then your race is too short for any song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go off in the line right there. You're like, oh, well. <laughs> Well, Rasheen, uh, do you have a no, last no, final no, question? I've, I've, I've like a million questions for Trey, so All right. we can thank <laughs> Rasheen for joining us. Rasheen, thank you so much for, for, for joining us. And again, one heck of an indoor season so far, and it's only the beginning for the Wisconsin indoor track. I have one more question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as as an Irish, uh, you know, citizen, He's an Irish right? Fan, so yeah. how how is it? I'm asking on behalf of my daughter, my daughter, Leisha, growing up with an Irish name. In America, is she like completely screwed? It, it's a little rough. My like least favorite day of the year is the first day of school because like every, especially in high school, you have like eight classes and it's like Roizen, Roizen, or every time the teacher goes like, oh, I'm gonna butcher this, and I'm just like, just can you ask me before? Like it's just so embarrassing in front of the entire class. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that aren't gonna know how to pronounce it, but. You get used to it. I well, think. now people do know how to say it. Yeah, Rasheen. people are getting That's around to it, so it's been nice. <laughs> That's what I've told my four-month-old. I was like, yeah. people are going to know the name Leisha. You just got to do some yeah, work. Make, it, make a name for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, Rasheen. Well, thanks so much for joining yeah, thank us. thank you. Sweet. So now, Trey, we've got some, uh, some 200s going on <laughs> on the track right now. Brashant Jackson here to watch his daughter. Maybe we'll get him on the show yeah, in a bit. Great. What do you remember about this sort of like 
time in your your high school career about just like learning the events like being a 200 meter specialist the 60 when it comes to outdoor season more so the 100 like how did you sort of have to like learn the event because it, it, with an 800 a mile like that's it's just through practice the did more you, you know do it. like 60 was you early or did you think maybe you were a 200 guy oh growing up i knew short sprints was for me like i knew distance was and then, like i like i my my uh my past coach coach g she she was a track rat like she knew everything so growing up i knew about every event and i knew i didn't want to run a lap around the track so for me i was like the short sprints was what, what you know was for me uh, 60, I didn't get into the 60 until I got to college. And even then, like, trying to really, like, understand it, it, it took me all the way into my sophomore year to really get the gist of it because I never really had to leave the blocks and just get it turned over uh, for the race, you know. Is so. the dry phase a lot quicker in the 60 versus the 100? Like, is the, is, is the first, you know, 30, 40 meters of the race – significantly different i just had a podcast with marvin where he explained it to me where it was just like you're just going at top end speed the yeah, entire time in the 60. I, I don't think the drive phase change i just think the frequency so like when i run the 60 like when 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 it was when we had mirrors like when you look if you look at the race like if you look at my race pattern it looked more like i was prepped to run 100 more than the 60. Like, you can see the difference of frequency between, like, me and Coleman, right? Like, he comes out and it's like, da 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 Mine is like, tom, 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 because I'm trying to build up. Like, it's 100. You know what I'm saying? So, I think that's the more so the difference when it comes to running, like, a 60 meters. Like, it's all a frequency race. So, it's all about getting out, turning over, building up that, that speed, and get to the line, rather than, like, a uh, structure of like your pattern and, and everything throughout the race to get up to 100 meters. Obviously, reaction time becomes an even bigger deal the shorter the race. Historically, how's your reaction? Uh, my my reaction it fluctuates. Like it's not it's never too slow, but I've never been also one of those guys that get like a 1.12. Like I I've, I've never like had anything like that. So I'm I'm pretty much consistent like one four one five like one three like from one from like one three. To like one five, like is my consistency of it. So, uh, you know, at a race indoors, sixty meters, you go, you cross the finish line, and then how quickly do you start thinking about, oh snap, I got to run up a bank and into a padded wall? Like, <laughs> when does that kind of hit you? Like, now I'm on defense. Oh, uh, <laughs> soon as I cross the line, you're like, even though I've ran fast in the sixty, I'm not too much of a fan of the sixty with bank tracks mm. because. Like I've seen a lot of people get hurt, yeah, and obviously because of my past injuries and stuff, like I'm I'm instantly cautious. That's why it's like, man, if you ever see me run like a six four, or obviously like later, um, probably more so next year in my career, like trying to run six three, like I it would have to be at a track that has a low bank or probably no bank, or like going into the wall. Because that, for me, I'm just like, man, I, I'm not trying to hurt my Achilles. You, you do know? think of it, yeah. yeah, like I think of it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like. <laughs> Or meats should gravitate towards that. Like, put that bank down. Like, or put or have meats that got a mechanical uh, bank to put it down. Because everybody, you know, you won't get the best race from everybody. Because sometimes mentally people think about that. Like, I'm not trying to get injured. The next person not trying to get injured. And you asking somebody to go top speed and instantly slam on brakes. So now you think about hamstring. You think about Achilles. Like all that stuff. Like, I hope that more meat directors and you know. Uh, uh, federations and stuff think about hey having some of these meets at tracks that got mechanical banks so we can stay safe you know yeah all right so now we're going to be joined by shamali whittle who just won the boys 200 2108 still got the spikes on i like <laughs> yeah, the, i, I like the kit yes. have do we have yeah, to man. introduce Superman, you to trayvon Mormel or oh, I, How'd so, that go? Yeah, how do you feel? I mean, you're um, you're still breathing. Like you just yeah. finished. I mean, kind of caught me surprised when I was walking. The thing I seen Chabon Brown sitting here, I was like, okay, that was. Uh. <laughs> and then, but you know, just focusing on the race. My coach told me just get out. You know, don't let any of these guys take you out the race point. And uh, when you come off the turn, just lift your arms and finish because they're gonna be coming for you. So just come off that that turn. Lift my arms and finish. That's what I was trying to do. Did you yeah. know that if you won, you'd get to sit down next to him? Uh, no, she literally just told me. I was like, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so when I, I was writing a preview up for this weekend, I, I, I looked you up and I saw that you've been making headlines in track since you were 10 years old. <laughs> so take us back to sort of a little bit of your your history within the sport. Yeah, you know, I started out, originally I was trying to be a hooper, but uh, 
my uh, my friends was like, you running pretty fast on these fast breaks. So uh, it's just like, you know, just trying to join track. And uh, I joined track. Matter of fact, in my first 200 race, I actually fell. Like, I just stumbled. But ever since then, my dad has been teaching me how Is to run. Is this your dad behind us? Yep, that's dad right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he just taught me all the fundamentals. He used to run track in Jamaica. And he got me to where I am today. So I appreciate everything he does for me. Looking at the field, like, coming into this, was it Nichols Harbor? Yeah. He had run 2079 on January 22nd in, in Lubbock, Texas, number four high school mark in history. So coming into this, like, did you see yourself as a little bit of the underdog? or like, And what was that race plan that, that uh, was? Kind of a little bit. You know, I was kind of watching the uh, storylines before that. I was kind of like a side note a little bit. It was kind of more Nicholas, Justin. So I was kind of like, okay. I see what the, the story is. I changed that. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy because when you come into a race, I feel like times don't matter anymore, especially at, like, a national meet. It's just, like, you know, who's here and who's going to win when they put us all on the same track. So. What lane is your preferred lane and what did you get today? Uh, lane 5 was fine for me. I was kind of happy when I got lane 5, you know, because the guy in lane 6, we're from the same state. We actually practice together sometimes. So, um... You know, I know that he gets out fast. So having out him in lane six, I know he's going to take me out real fast. So I was kind of happy with the lane draw. Trey, what's your preferred lane? Uh, it depends on the track. Uh, Arkansas, you know, I'd say five, four or five, just because it's not too steep. Um, tracks that got more so of like a lower bank, probably lane six, just to get more of that effect, to get, like the slingshot effect. But it, it kind of favors it all depending on the track for me. What about in the Olympics? If we're in a hundred, where do you want to be? Do you want to be right in the middle? Man, honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a straightaway. So I never understood why people were like, oh, I want this lane in a hundred. I'm like, it's, it's all a straightaway. Maybe like, a lucky lane. I don't know. Nah, nah, man. I about to say because the first time I ran nine eight was in lane one. So like, I'm like, I don't need to be in the middle of the track. Or like, I don't think that really matters for me. So, Jamali, I guess take us through what Hamilton North Nottingham is like. Because it, it's, right, there's there's multiple different parts in that New Jersey area of similar schools. But I guess what's your track program been like? Well, you know, it's a public school. Yeah. So it's not like any of the private schools, you know. You don't recruit kids. It's just what comes out, where you grow up, that's all the kids that's just going to go into Nottingham. You know, we just work hard. You know, nothing's given to us. We don't have all this money facilities and stuff, you know. A weight room, it just looks a rough weight room, man. We've just been there putting in work every day, putting work on the track. So, you know, we're just a hard working school. No matter what it is, just work hard. So Trayvon, when he brought up the fact, it was like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I was a side note coming into some of these, you know, discussions before the race. You've probably been in that situation before, too. I mean, just in your career, coming up at the same time as Bolt and Gatlin. And so how do you sort of feed off of that, that, like, you know, today he won. You've had cases also where you've surprised people and won. So what is it about, you know, that sort of, like, I'm going to prove people wrong mentality? Yeah, oh, I think that underdog mentality, man, is definitely a dangerous place people you know like for myself i love I, I feel like i perform the best when i'm underdog like on being on top like don't get me wrong you want to be number one and everything but i think you get your best performances from those who are like the underdogs like the dark horses because they feel like they got something to prove you know mm -hmm. and i was always taught you know a, a man with a purpose is a dangerous man so i feel like for me I, like a lot of those races where people kind of underestimated me i'm like okay like i'm about to make y'all feel me you know what i'm saying so I think that's why you see a lot of great performances from people that's like not really the headliners, and you you see some dangerous from them when they mm -hmm. race. So Jamal, you're here next to one of the greatest sprinters in the world. I know that you want to be in that seat one day. What would you ask him? You know, you got an opportunity right now. Ask it. Ask one of the best all time to do it. Like, I always wondered, like for Olympic runners, like when you're on the biggest stage of the world, everyone's watching. Like, what's going on in your mind? All the lights is on you. Everyone's watching you, the Olympics, the biggest stage, 100 meter dash. Uh, I think more so people people probably think like one, they wonder like how they're going to perform. You know, I think that's probably the biggest thing. You know, with some of the meets throughout the year and things like that, you're not really thinking too much on it. But you know, like at say like the Olympics, you're thinking like the whole world is watching. Like so, and then obviously for a race that's, you know, nine seconds, there's little room for error. You know, you mess up, things go wrong. and it's hard to fix it in such a short race. So I think going into it, you're just kind of wondering, well, first you want to think about your race plan, but ultimately when you get on the line, you're just hoping that everything plays out the way you want it to play out. So I think that's really, for that's what I think probably goes through everybody's head, is just hoping to do what they 
have trained to do, you know. Do you want to go into coaching one day? Is this oh, yeah, definitely. You do, definitely. yeah. I, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day that I definitely want to be a coach uh, at some point in my life. Uh, obviously, I, stu- I studied kinesiology in school, so I know the body well. I'm um, a track rat. Anybody can tell you. Anybody that has coached me or been around me, they know, like, I study track and field. Like, I, I sit down and I, I work on angles, trajectory, velocity. Like, I understand all that. So, and I'm, you know, I feel like I'd be a great coach. You know, it's, it's just whenever that time comes. Right now, obviously, I want to enjoy me being a pro. Shaman, maybe one day would when you you're a pro. You? Yeah, oh, would you? Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm Handshake a deal right now. Yeah. 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 I'm going to be an agent first, so I might be an agent first, <laughs> after then, you know, you know. I can be a coach. <laughs> so what are you most excited about, I guess, now that you've got this title coming outdoor season? or You're, you're going to do a full outdoor season, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, outdoor, I don't know. I just feel it's better vibes out, uh, outdoor, you know, spring season. Just going into spring season, everyone's outside, weather getting better. I just can't wait to just, just have fun, to be honest, with track out in the outdoor season. Yeah. What year in school are you? I am a senior. Do you know where you're going next year? Yeah, I committed to Georgia. Very nice. cool. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to Georgia. What's most exciting about that when it comes to, uh, I guess, Matthew Bowling's going to be a yeah. teammate? Just linking with uh, Coach Cass, to be honest, yeah. you know. I know all the great things that she's done, you know. Going there, new opportunities, you know. I've seen the facilities they had out there. And this chance to get better. I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah, awesome. Did you visit Baylor? <laughs> no, nah, Baylor didn't out there yet. Oh, man. Yeah. Come on, gonna... Coach Ford. What you doing? <laughs> So, uh, I guess any last questions you got for, for Trayvon? I feel like if you if we put you two in a room, you guys would just like yeah, hit I'll it off. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, it's crazy that he just sitting next to me like this, you know. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a, that, that was the one major question that I had because I just watch Olympics. It's just like everyone's watching you. I don't know. Like I know me, I'll be nervous. Hey man, nervous. It's nothing wrong with nervousness, man. At the end of the day, you got to understand that track and field is black and white. Whatever happens, happens. At the end of the day, you just try to prepare to your best ability. You know what I'm saying? So just stay focused on your preparation. You go into a good coach in Georgia, like Coach Carol. Like I said, she she coached one of, you know, obviously my rivals and now my teammate, Andre. And, you know, he's he was prepared. And obviously you see, like, Matthew Bowling doing his thing too. So when you get with her, just make sure you're doing everything that you need to do and make sure you listen to everything that she's saying. You know, and you'll be all right. And I, I think something that we touched on earlier a little bit is, like, there's ups and downs in the career, right? Like, you know that as well as anyone, Trey. Like, and just really, I hope you get to soak in this moment right now and uh, really appreciate it. That was Trey's advice to some of the other national champs that joined us. So. Like, I've been from high school with injuries, not being looked at, you know, dealing with almost not getting into college, then getting into college and people still doubt me, having to perform well. Still getting doubted, you know what I'm saying? Then now I go on a four-year hiatus of being injured out of the sport because of my foot and still come back and made my mark as being in the top ten and fastest in history. So never let the downs get you, you know what I'm saying? Always bounce back stronger, keep that faith, never give up. Because, I mean, in life you're going to deal with trials, you know what I'm saying? It's how you react to those trials, you know, that makes you who you are. So never give up, dog. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. So in recent years, I mean, obviously we've seen what New Jersey has produced on the on the women's side in the 400 and the 800. On the guys' side right now, New Jersey on the rise? Like, oh, buy yeah. stock in New Jersey? Watch out for all the New Jersey athletes. You know, we just won two in the 200, you know. We coming. New Jersey, stop sleeping on us. You know, we coming. Right. I love that. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And, right, and go out and, and, and celebrate with your with your family, your teammates. And, uh, yeah, thank, thank you. thanks so much. It. Yeah. And if you want to get a photo with Trey, just go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah do we? Joe, can you grab a quick photo of those two? <laughs> I love the fact that we just have people coming straight off the track, like straight off. No the track. cool down. Uh, yeah. Straight in. Um, do we have we more coming? By, oh, yeah. No way. It's nonstop. All, All right. right. We are now. Joined by is it Ramia Ramaya? Ramaya Elliott, the girls 200 meter champion, 2334. Come on in, have a seat. Still got the spikes on, fresh off the track. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no cool down, straight in. Do you know our special co host over here? You know who he is? No, all right, it's Trayvon Bramel, two time Olympian, first time. Uh, so he's run pretty fast. Uh, I'm what? slow. I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess what take us through the race out there because uh, coming into this, a lot of people had their eyes on on Shanti Jackson come into it. So you went out there and pulled off the upset. How how'd it go? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I think it went good. My start wasn't how I wanted it to be, but I realized like once I get on the second curve, I have to chase them to be in the race. So I just got word that you're also in the 60s. So this is we got to keep this. Okay, we'll keep short. it short. Yeah. So what 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 have you been looking forward to? I guess the most today. I mean, was it this race or the 60? Like coming away with both titles would be pretty awesome. Yeah, I think I'm really looking forward to like just getting PRs and getting ready for outdoor season. Perfect. So coming from Indiana, have you been to the Armory before? No, this is my first time. What was it like? What was this experience? It's really, I like it a lot. It's just really cold. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So with the 60, are you gonna call your shot? Are we doubling down? How are you feeling right now? Um, hopefully we get the 60 win. If we don't, I'm not really. I'm gonna be happy with whatever I get. Awesome. Well, so Trey, you've had to do some doubles in your career, especially coming back on relays. What 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 should she do between this little period before the next one up? I think we need to let her go. Recover. Yeah. yeah, you know, as an athlete, like I I would not be wanting to do an interview right now, but we glad to have you. But yeah. we also want you to do well, so yeah. I think we need to let her go yeah. recover and get what a perfect. Coach we heard it here from the expert. Yeah. We'll let you go, get ready for your next race. But thank you so much for 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 popping by real quick. Trey, I'm ready to let you coach me. I like I, I've seen your work so far. You know, see what you can do with right, me. Man. I have you right. I have you go out there and run six four, man. How are things going right now with you? Man, training has been great. Obviously, like my teammates, man. Like we got a great line of athletes in our group, and man, we've been working hard, man. It's, I think outdoors is going to be something special for our group for sure. The plans right now for the season opener. You told us before we start rolling. Top secret. Top secret, man. Top secret. I mean, I, I can tell y'all, like, I'm definitely opening up with uh, a lot of 200s this year. So, uh, 100, haven't really solidified anything with my agent yet. I hope we're still trying to figure that out. But right now, just, I'm going to be running 200s a lot this uh, beginning part of the outdoor season. Are we going to see you in short shorts? I mean, we were talking a little bit before we went live. You know, the, the distance runners, we love it when sprinters wear short shorts. You said that when you started doing it, all of a sudden, next season came out. You saw a few extra people starting to wear short yeah. shorts. Are you going to be doing it, keeping it going? Uh, it depends. I know I know. with NB, we coming out with, like, some new designs and stuff for, like, our uniforms. So it all depends on how that work out uh, and how it look. But right now, I don't know. It, it's been tough trying to transition back to the shorts. We'll see. You know, we'll see. What do you like about it? Uh, I think you got a lot of free range. Uh <laughs> Yeah, you, you like you don't have nothing being constricted, you know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like I got knee lift, like I can open up and not having anything feeling like it's tugging or pulling me back. Is there something like kind of when you, when you look at your season, you said you're going to start off with a lot of 200s. Yeah. Do you take a blueprint from, say, 2015 or 2016 where like this really worked, like let's try and do this again? Or does every season change because of, I don't know, like your body is developing still and like you're sometimes putting on more muscle before seasons and you're doing things differently. So like is there a blueprint that you're working off of or is this just like let's try something new? Obviously, everybody who know, like, with me being in my new training group, it's, it's a lot different from, like, the college uh, system. Uh, you know, in college, like, you have, like, pretty much a structure of, like, you come in in the fall, uh, you're doing so much base training, you gradually get more and more da trickled down to, like, speed-specific stuff. And you already have, like, this base for, like, in our group now, we, like, have specific things that we do day in and day out, different months, like, we do different things, so it's... Like, right now, I can tell you, like, yeah, me and our training group, like, we're ready to roll, like, in the hundreds and stuff. But it's like, is it worth going out right now and dropping a nine-second race for no reason? You know what I'm saying? So, it's like just trying to put on the right game plan for the season. And I wouldn't say I take it too much away from, like, 2015, 2016. Because, like I said, once again, the structure is different. So, you can't really look at it like, oh, let me pull something from back here. Because, like, what I did at college and what we had as a game plan at college is different so much more different than what uh, my new group has now so that's it'll be probably hard to try to take anything from them but and then obviously too you gotta think like I raced a lot more so every meet it was 60 200 or outdoors is one two four by one like now as a pro you don't do that so you kind of gotta build a different game plan one of the cool things when I just had this podcast with Marvin was just a little bit of like how he broke down like the competitors and he told me like what everyone's different strengths were and you just before it said like you're one someone who like really studies up on everything about like everyone in the field is that like looking at video of like Fred races or like uh, you know uh, who is it uh, Lamont Marcel Jacobs and like what they're doing and you see kind of like are you able to pick apart like what what's their strengths and weaknesses so like what what was what was so special, I guess, about last year that the hundred sh shook out the way it did in Tokyo? 
Oh uh, yeah, man, it, it could be a lot of variables, man. Like I said, for myself, I, I feel like every once I started running fast, a lot of people had a lot of expectations, and I feel like that for the viewer that deleted everything that I've been through prior, right? Mm-hmm. So if like if I was in the viewer's shoes, looking at an athlete who's been through what I've been through, I'd be like, hey. Like, regardless of what happened, like, you got to kind of give the guy, like, a break or a chance because I think when I started running fast last year, everybody forgot that I was injured for four years. So when I turned pro in 2016, I only did three races overseas. So, I like, unlike every competitor that was in that field, I never ran overseas. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't really know what it was like. Like, my agent and everybody could tell you, like, every meet last year overseas, I was throwing up before every race. Like, I'm not used to the food. I'm not really – I wasn't really used to the travel, you know. So, and I think once I started running fast, everybody was like, oh, bump everything he been through. He needs to win. And I'm just like, well, dang. Like, like I'm, I'm still trying to get, you know, readjusted. I'm in a new group, new environment. So, I think people kind of, like, skipped all that and just went right into, like, oh, man. Like, you know. But for me, it was like – for those who did run well, like, for instance, like Marcel Jacobs, like, I think for him, like, the biggest thing was that he was the person that made the less mistake in the race. Like, he was just a technician. Yeah. If you look at all his races, his form and everything looks the same. So I don't think he did anything different. He just ran the same race pattern that he ran throughout the whole season. And, you know, and that's what led him to the win. You yeah, know, and well. Fred had the race of his life, and it was just like – it. There's nothing Fred could have done that was better. It's just like his best day was not as good as the other guy's best yeah. day. And so it's just fascinating because, like, I think a, a point that we're trying to do better at, too, and, like, you know, Jasmine Todd kind of working with us now and keeping us informed with, like, what is happening in the sprints is that, and I brought this up to Marvin, is, like, that whole explanation about, like, how sick you were before these races beforehand, yeah. like, that's not – it's not on the broadcast. Like, no yeah. one's – your races are so short, there's not enough time to fill in the viewers as to, like, what's going on. So, like – is that a little part of just kind of like the sprints coverage? Like it, it can always be better. It can yeah. there can be so much more because you guys have some of the shortest races, but the story the storylines behind it and like the buildup is like it, it, it's, it's what people it's the context that I think is missing. And so yeah. yo, when I tell you, if people knew about a lot of my overseas races, I think a lot of people would look at us athletes differently. Like they, I think they have more like compassionate for what we do. Like I can, I kid you not. And what was it, Gates? Gates head. When I had one that morning, I was throwing up green bile. Like literally, I was in the, like in the shower, just throwing up just because of the food. I was throwing up all morning. Nairobi, the last meet of the year when I ran nine six. You can ask my trainer. I was up at three o'clock in the morning to the race, throwing up. Literally, like <laughs> I was going through it, yo. Like on the on the circuit, like so. I but like you said, people don't notice. So like they take it as like oh he just ran bad or he just like no nah, y'all like this ain't this is nothing easy that we do as pro athletes so you're what people gotta understand when we go overseas we have to adjust to those climates that those athletes are already uh, uh, accustomed to right so like everybody like oh we don't we don't count USA like USA times because they ran it in the USA well we can say the same thing for people that race in Europe they run in their country right so we run our, we run fast in our country so we gotta go to them and try to perform at our usual level where I feel like that's a challenge. Not saying it can't be done. Obviously, we see like people like Tyson and, 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 and Johan and, and Gatlin and Bolton and so on and so forth move around the world and run fast. But also, I think people got to understand like everybody is not them, right? Like yeah. people ha- have their own identity. Anybody who know me know I got a weak stomach. I just can't go in Europe and just eat whatever and think I can go and perform at a high level. So like, I think for, my, for, for me and what my team has uh, talked about like, I'm going to race a lot more overseas for the rest of my career so I can get adjusted so that people don't have to see what happened last year at the Olympics with me or even my races overseas because I don't like getting in front of the camera and telling people, like, this is the reason why I ran the way I did, but I'm also I'm not lying. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes the truth is hard to put out there. I, then I think that's why I don't talk a lot, talk about it a lot because I feel like regardless it's the truth, people are going to make an uh, accusation of, like, oh, this, this, and that, excuses, this, and that. I'm like, it's not an excuse because it's the truth, right? Yeah. So, the idea I had was, like, you know how Aaron Rodgers goes on, like, the Pat McAfee show every single week and just kind of, like, gives an update. It's like, hey, here's how my season's going. I feel like we should just pick Trayvon and do that every single week. Like, like, we just general, hop on a call and keep people, like, informed as to what's going on, it, the good, the bad, the ugly. I feel like, in general, there's just, like, not really enough places for people to talk about sprints. Yeah. You know, it's like, you, you're very good about keeping people informed on 
your personal social media channels. Yeah. But like the dialogue is part of what makes it so fun. Like yeah. r- r- racing a hundred or watching a hundred, it's in and out. But like the yeah. conversation and like the trash talk and like all the behind the scenes, that's the fun part. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean Marvin filled me in. On it. If people haven't done so yet, go go and listen to the podcast interview I did with Marvin about like two or three weeks ago. Because like it is crazy. There's drama. There's there's trash talk. There's oh, yeah, there's yeah. people just running their mouths on on YouTube oh. videos and all this stuff. <laughs> uh, and but at the same time, like it it adds to the entertainment value of it. Yeah. But the beauty of it is like, yeah, you could say whatever you want, but let's settle this. Let's yeah. let's go head to head on the track and. Uh, you've been one that just like comes out and performs each time. Each time oh, out. Are we are we transitioning to the football trash talk? Like, <laughs> where are we at with that? Man, look, we still we still trying to get everything situated, man. You know, you got you got a lot of the football guys out in the world. They think they world class runners, and we just ready to dead that conversation. So, like, even with me, I I didn't already had New Balance send me some cleats because I'm gonna end up <laughs> running a forty and putting the video out and everything and pretty much clearing all this nonsense down because like i mean i feel like it's crazy because coleman had already shut the you yeah. know shut the world like the football world up with what he did you know what i'm saying in the 40 but then also you got people saying oh like oh he did it in track spikes which i feel like if he did it in football he still would have ran fast regardless yeah. so what i'm trying to do now is like i'm gonna do it in the football cleat so then the football players can say oh he did it in track spikes like no no we we finna dead this i guarantee you right now the top 10 guys in the u.s or in the world will shut down any football player in the 40 in their own in their own environment on turf in their own equipment as cleats we would still run fat way faster than 422 421 but i guess they it's hard for them to realize that it's different like it's just you know you're you're so specialized to do what you're doing like you're not trying to do anything while also being able to catch a ball or something like and you know that development i think the what you've been working on obviously since college it, they're they're discounting a little bit like yeah. i don't know it's like i feel like you're allowed to be a little insulted that someone who doesn't specialize in it thinks that they Man. can come in and even be it, in a conversation it blow my mind like i said for for me it, it it's it's funny when it comes to the 40 that it's still a conversation cuz like i said like when coleman had posted the video and he ran fast like let's re- let's remind y'all that was a coleman that wasn't even a 63 coleman yet so it's like Y'all really want to do this? Like we talk about, like guys like me, Coleman, Marvin, uh, Ronnie. Like we probably could dip under four seconds. Do y'all not realize that? <laughs> like, like we, we like that. That's the thing that blew my mind. So the fact that they still like try to come out and be like, oh, I could we could run with the hundred runners, or we could run a, a fast sixty. We like, no, y'all can't. Like, do y'all not know that forty yards is only thirty five meters? <laughs> do y'all know what? I, like, we can get on a free lap, and I can prove to y'all that we can run up under four seconds. Thirty five meters is nothing to us. So it's like, come on, y'all. Like, that's a dry phase for us. Yeah. The relay option that you threw out there was, I think, even even more fascinating. And that one turned out a little bit more debate, too, because I think you, you said it would you, Marvin, uh, Shakari, and Tiana would be the four-by-one that would beat any top four football players. And I think in the comments for that one, it was like, that would be a much closer race, but at the same time, these football guys don't know about running the curve and the handoffs. Man, I feel like people just look at it from, oh, boy, girl. And they're not looking at it from the actual scientific standpoint. So most most people don't know that 100 runners run pretty much almost a second in the relay. You know, like, like I said, for Bolt, I want to say Bolt fastest split was like 8 mid in the in the in the relay. So you take two nine, you take a nine eight and a nine seven guy, you pretty much from the from the block, I still think Marvin can give a low nine second run. But shoot, we know like, even if you know somebody like Coleman, you know what I'm saying, in the relay, like he like we see what he did on first leg. So we yeah. like, okay, come on, think about it. Marvin runs nine eight consistently. He's gonna give you a nine eight at worst or nine low faster on the curve. You give it somebody like me who can run obviously with a fly gonna run eight high. That's going to make up for whatever the football guys can't, you know what I'm saying, what the girls can't do against the football guys, yeah. which they're going to drop a second as well, respectively, in, in their speed. So they're going to go from 10-7 to almost 10 low. Those guys don't know how to run curves. They ain't <laughs> never took no handle. And, and, and everybody going from high school times, how do you even know that they can still run those times? Yeah, that was a bit DK was the only person yeah. that proved that he can run 10-3. I'm not giving none of them other guys that speed. And I'm only giving DK that is because he's still young. I didn't even know how young he was until I looked him up. Mm-hmm. So he's the only one that I'm giving that 10-3 to. Like, people, 
people are not thinking that Tyreek has been away from track and field for a very long time. Yeah. And picked up weight. Form probably changed because he running with pads and all that stuff. Like, when he take that stuff off, he probably be all over the place. Yeah. Like, I don't think people are thinking about the science behind it. A hundred percent. Uh, I feel like we opened a can of worms and Trayvon could go oh, off man. and off about this even more. But we've got another guest joining us. We've got Gary Martin, who just won the Boys Mile. Come on and join us over here. Still got the spikes on again. Still has again. the finish yeah. line tape. And the finish yeah, line tape. <laughs> we do a lot of wrestling field, but I'll try. Microphone, right? yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys. So I'm looking at the results right now because we, we've, we've been in here. We've been peeking over for the race, but 402.34 for you for the win. Personal Zane best. Ber Personal best? Personal best, yeah. Zane Bergen. Personal best, yeah. <laughs> Zane Bergen was second, 402.64. And then third was 402.66. Fourth was 402.69. It, it came down to a lean or yeah. something. Yeah. It was a little bit. I think I, I could tell because they were outside of me, but I just knew coming out of the back stretch that they were gaining on me and they were right with me. So came down to the very end. How did the race play out? What did you guys go out in? Yeah, so I mean, we had a pacer to the first 800. I got caught in the back a little bit for the first couple laps, but... Moved my way up. Pacer brought us through with like 202. So I think we negative split a little bit. And I mean, I led, besides the Pacer, I led probably from after 400 meters. And I got passed with 400 to go, made a move back for 300 and was able to hold on to it. I like it. So now, I mean, 402, we just have to ask, like that sub four is on your mind, right? It's definitely on the mind. I mean, there's going to be good opportunities to come out there. I'm just going to keep enjoying the training and the process because... That's voted me well. I mean, the past few weeks of indoor, I know this might sound counterintuitive, but I focus less on goals and more just on having fun with trading and competing, and I think it's benefited me. So I've got to keep doing that moving forward. Trayvon, how do you what, how do you sort of like stress like the importance of keeping practice fun and keeping the, the, the sport fun in general when it comes to like doing this and, and getting into competition? Yeah, yeah, it's, I think it's important. You definitely got to have that mentality of having fun with it, uh, enjoying these moments, and even at practice. Like I know even for our group, like we always having a good time. Even though when it's time to actually do the work, we get serious. But when a rep is done or a set is done, we enjoy the moment. We enjoy each other's company. Uh, and I think that's very important. You want to have fun doing this, you know? Yeah, definitely. Was this fun at the Armory today? A like lot of fun. It was awesome. I mean, just seeing seeing all these fast guys, watching all the fast races, getting some nice some nice UDs and some, some nice spikes. So it was a lot of fun. So Trayvon's run 9-6 for the 100. What? 9-7. Nine, 9-7. Seven. Nine, seven. Nine, six coming soon. Nine, yeah. 9-7 for the 100. What distance, what amount of distance do you think he could cover in four minutes and two seconds? What do you think? Uh, <laughs> think it like. What, what, wait, what was the question? It's, it's, how much distance can you cover on a track in four minutes and two seconds? Like, you, you obviously not a mile. Who, you ask you. You can make you, a you, half you, mile in four minutes. Half mile can you make a 1K? Man, <laughs> I'm making to the defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm giving him credit for like, I think like three, three point five k. Just hold that. Can you run like, like a five minute mile? Y'all, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. I, don't, I, I don't know anything about sprinting. Yeah, y'all yeah, speaking foreign to me right now. <laughs> like all I'm thinking of right right now, I need my inhaler. Like I feel it. Like my lungs is caving in when y'all talking about this. <laughs> Gary, what's your fastest hundred? Best is 100. Uh, that you've ever seen? Maybe a stride at practice. I was gonna something? say I've run hundreds of practice. I think I've touched like 11.8. That's pretty Solid. good. Shoot, that's Put him on better. the relay. That's way better than what I was running on in a mile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm, not, I'm probably going to give you a good seven, eight minutes at best. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what uh, I guess it was explained to me by Marvin and you that it's like sprinters running a mile. It's just like there's just too much time for you guys to think. Yeah, that, that's the thing, though. Like, that's why I tell people, like, I, like, I feel like I'm going to run a 400, but I, it gives me too much time to think, like, yo. I got extra meters to go. Like, with the 100 and the 200, it's like, boom, over. I've got that problem, too, except for distance. It's, like, too much thinking with the 5K and the 2-mile. <laughs> the mile is my short race. So, yeah. my, my, the mile is my year 100. It's all relative. Exactly. So, Gary, you're going to UVA next year. Is I that am. true? Yes. Just out of curiosity, you know, and, you know, we have Trayvon here. You know, he went to Baylor and made, a, obviously, a good decision, made two Olympic yeah. teams. Why did you choose UVA? Uh, it was a great school academically. I took a visit. I love the teammates. I saw myself fitting in. And <coughs> sorry, I'm a little tired. But the coaching staff, they just hired Vin Lanana a few years ago. He won a ton of NCAA titles at Stanford, Oregon. He's sent guys to the Olympics, had a lot of success. He knows how to do it. So we're looking to build a program at UVA. You know, someone in this room was coached by Vin for a little bit. <laughs> Mac, our you, camera guy. <laughs> do, you, do you have any advice for uh, him going into to Vin's program? <laughs> let's, get, let's get him a mic real quick. 
<laughs> oh no. Uh, <laughs> I'm pulling cards out. Uh, fight him on his handshake. Don't let him turn your hand over. Okay, I can try that. <laughs> yeah, just immediately when you go, just fight him on his handshake. Got it. Good advice. Thank you. So, you know, you're saying build a program. Trey, was that something that you, like, thought about when you were going to college? You know, building the entire team? Or was it, you know, I want to be the best and what can I do? Well, I feel like with Baylor, you know, like, they had so many greats before. Obviously, like, Jeremy Warner, uh, Michael Johnson, and so on and so forth. So, it was really just trying to continue that tradition of excellence, you know. So, just trying to focus on doing my part. Uh, I think he ain't going to have no problem. Like, I'm, I'm feeling his You're energy. You're feeling the vibe? Like, his yeah. energy and his, you know, confidence, even the way he, like, he, he holds himself is it, showing me great things, you know. So, I, I, don't, I don't think he will have no problem in college for sure. Gary, do you want to be an Olympian when you grow up? Is that, like, on the plan or what? It's a dream. I mean, it's up until, like, a year ago, it felt crazy to even, th- <laughs> to even think about it. But now, I mean, I'm at a point where I'd like to think it's it's not insane. Like, it's if I, it takes a whole lot of hard work and a whole lot of talent come up combined. But... It's, it's a dream, and I'd love to work towards it in college. So, yeah. I feel like so many people could get distracted by, like, oh, you know, the Newberry Park boys, and just in general how good they are and, like, how they're pushing it from the, from the front end of things and, like, how crazy fast that's been. But I guess today was, like, a really great reminder that in that sort of next sort of pocket and that next tier, there's still some awesome talent in there. What can you say, I guess, about, like, the competition you went up against today and how you guys might try and push each other to sub four outdoors? Yeah, I mean, this isn't... <laughs> Sorry, I'm All still good. The, no, it's I'm fine. tired for the mile, man. But um, <laughs> do you need water? If you have water, that'd be great, actually. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. But um, I mean, if you look at this race, I mean, this is, I don't, I didn't see the final results yet, but you said there's like four guys sub four or three. So yeah, I mean, I saw people talking about whether there could be five, six guys running sub four and outdoors this year, and I mean, you've only had what like 18 total. So it sounds crazy, but when you look at the amount of talent in the country right now, I think it's doable. So I really think it'll be a fast season outdoors. There's a ton of fast guys here, and. This isn't even all the fast guys in the country, so there'll be more. There'll be a lot of sub four. Or could be people knocking on the door sub four. Trey, what do you think is going on in the high school ranks these days that are making kids just faster and faster? Man, I, I feel like we get we get exposed to a lot more resources. Um, you know, as far as I can't obviously speak too much on the high school sense because obviously I'm not in the actual field of it right now. But I, I can say that I know what the world has brought in the sense of, like, equipment and, and resources that people can use to get better. Um, coaching styles, like, all those things evolve and change. So nowadays, shoot, a lot of the high schoolers are getting what the college athletes are getting, just like the college athletes are getting a lot of things that, you know, pros are getting, you know. So I think a lot of that plays a part in seeing these drops in times and seeing faster and faster people. Yeah, I mean, I was going to build off of that. I think it's just easier and easier to find what the best best type of training is. And to go off of that, I think there's just more and more guys working hard. And <clears throat> when you see guys in high school who are breaking four and knocking on the, knocking on the door sub four, you think like, hey, I can do that. It's not crazy. And then guys are setting their goals higher and working towards it. So I think it's a combination of things. Yeah. So, you know, obviously Trey is your favorite 100-meter runner in the country. Course, yes. <laughs> who, who are your favorite other pro athletes that you follow? Uh, I mean, Nick Willis is someone I followed a lot just because I think it's – what he's done with his uh, longevity is pretty incredible. And uh, I'm trying to think who else. I mean, obviously, I'm a big big Cole Hawker guy. What he's been doing is incredible. He's pretty young. And I just think there's a lot of talented guys in, in college right now at, at the pros. So there's a lot of a lot of guys who I'm highly impressed with. I got a good feeling you're going to be part of that next generation. Yeah, well, I, I'm like, man, like I'm loving like how he speaks, yo. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Please don't let nobody change your mentality and how you carry yourself, man. Like your identity is very important, and I feel like you found that. So stay in that, man. Don't let nobody change you. Keep that hunger and keep that, that strive for greatness, Thank yo. you. Well, Dale. Trey, who, who did you look up to when you were in high school? Who are the guys? Man, so if you watch a lot of my 100-meter races, man, I, I mimic a lot of my race style at the Tyson. Like from – I remember it was a steal shot from 2015. Like, as soon as we came out the blocks, you see we had the same arm drive and everything. Like, in high school, I would have I would have Adidas spikes because of him, you know. So, like, a lot of my stuff was mimicked after Tyson. Um, obviously, like, seeing people like Gatlin and Bold and Johan and all those guys in the softball, like, I watched a lot of those guys as well because I knew that's where I wanted to be. Uh, but a lot of the times, man, Tyson was, like, the guy for me. I was like, man, I wanted to be like him. So that yeah, he was definitely like one I stay watching and kind of mimic my style out there. Did you watch the Olympics past summer? Of course, yeah, I did. Anything really move you? What was your favorite moment? I guess. Uh, I think uh, I mean you know I'm a distance guy, so 
I'm trying to think of I'm like I'm blanking on specific member moments right now, but the don't Osaka. say the hundred. Don't that? say the hundred. Yeah, not don't the hundred. We didn't like the hundred this year. Don't say the hundred. Uh, I mean, I think even like the ten thousand, the five thousand, like watching guys like Grant Fisher like put themselves up there with the world top guys of the world, and I mean, you're seeing what he's doing now indoor, breaking records and stuff. So I think it's it's impressive, and it's a good time for American distance running. The ten k in particular, that's a lot of laps on the track, and like the amount of thinking that you probably have to go through that and so that with Trayvon's big thing being like there's so much time to think today's race four minutes and two seconds is it just solely focused on what's going on in front of you like what is going through your head it's usually a bunch of random stuff I mean <laughs> on my good days I focus on the race on bad days I got music running through my heads or something but I mean today it was, I think it helped having a pacer because I got out a little slow and I mean that's not ideal but it kind of helped because the first couple laps I worked on moving my way up and then through 800, I was just stick to the back of the pacer. So I didn't have to do much thinking. I could let him do the work. And then after that, the last 800 was just, I kind of slowly accelerating, try to pull away. And then anytime I saw someone, be able to retaliate. So I think I have the pacer helped. I mean, it kind of turned it into an 800 meter race. But like I said, just kind of focusing on what's in front of me. So right behind you just now, 437 for the mile with Juliet Whitaker winning. You high school kids are just so fast right now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's insane. I mean, yesterday, what, Natalie Cook with 944 for the two mile. That was, that's insane. Yeah. Well, Gary, thanks so much for, for joining us. Uh, best of luck, I guess, in the, uh, the upcoming outdoor season. And then at UVA. Thank you. Again, take Max advice. I will. Dominate that handshake. Yeah, work on the handshake. <laughs> thanks right. so much for joining well, us. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gary. Have a good one, man. Good to be you. Good luck this season, too. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. You, you can coach the mile. <laughs> it's a mentality thing. I'm going to just tell them go and run. Look, 20-minute run, y'all. I'll be back. 20-minute run. I'll see y'all when y'all get back. He's, yeah, he's yeah. electric. Doc, I like his energy, yo. Like, as soon as he started talking, I was like, he's going to be good. Yeah, like, I, like, I like his mentality. I like his energy. Yo. Like that's instantly what I got. I think that's the thing I've been most impressed by this whole weekend of all of the kids that we've talked to. Like, they're really like good, fun, like mature. Yeah. Like they know what they're doing. It. I yeah. felt like in high school I had no idea what was going on, and mm -hmm. like these kids fully get it. Yeah. I mean, it's so much easier to keep track of like every what everyone else is doing just with with social media. Trey, when was I guess like the moment that like you felt like your social media blew up and like that because you saw success as such a young person and like coming up in that so, sort of social media era like that just leads to, to more noise yeah yeah uh, I want to say uh, when I got the uh, bronze medal at Beijing that's like when everything for like me from a social aspect it got crazy like I knew it, like a lot of eyes were watching me I think I had jumped up to like almost like 80k followers at the wow. time uh, and it was, it was wild for me man because then I started realizing I'm like okay I got people watching me uh even, like, from a, a youth standpoint, I was thinking, like, okay, even though I'm still young, the young athletes or, you know, kids coming up throughout the neighborhoods and stuff, like, they, they're watching and seeing my every movement. Uh, how am I going to now be, like, a leader for those those individuals, even with me still being so young? So it was it was crazy, man. Like, it's it's definitely different. That's why, like, for these, this type of situations, like, I always tell people that's, like, in the program, like, man, we got to be – Icons, we got to be like right leaders for these up and coming athletes, right? Because if we don't, then we're just going to be leading them down the wrong path. Yeah. So we got to make sure that we show them like how to do this thing. Like, so when they get here, they're well equipped with how to handle situations. What's one of the things that maybe people who aren't professional athletes don't really get about it? Like, or what's one of your favorite parts besides just competing? Oh, uh, I think the interaction, man, like, I think it's very important. Um, to be able to interact with those who are coming up in the ranks who do want like a lot of like a lot of people take it as like oh man I don't feel like like probably talking to people and things like that but I'm like man these individuals especially the youth they want to know how to handle the type of situation that we're put in so we should be able to be open to those individuals to be able to answer whatever questions they need because how would they know because they coaches probably never been in our situation their parents anybody never probably been in our situation so we're their next best option to be able to get them to answer on how to deal with pressure how to deal with uh anxiety through situations of probably traveling to a competition or dealing with you know people we got to be able to be open to them yeah i you know look i've been rooting for you for a long time but i think a few years ago when you did the scholarship contest you gave away fifty thousand oh, dollars right yeah for uh, to high schoolers to help them college scholarship. 
that was when I was like, all right, like you've got me as a fan for life. I guess sure. what was the motivation for that? What was the reaction? Like you really do practice what you preach. So, so one thing when, when I did that, it was the giving away the money thing was that was that was nothing for well, me. Well, you like, were hurt too at the yeah. time, like so. I I just commend you for it. So, like I said, like the the. The donation, like it wasn't even more so about giving away the money, but actually getting to know, uh, getting to know people, right? So to be able to go through all those essays, man, and learn about individuals and their trials and things that they've been through, I was like, yo, this is, it, it, it's, man, it, it brings tears to the eyes with some of the things people had to deal with. So for me, it was all about helping those individuals get over that hump and get a better life for themselves. So. The sixties are about to happen, so we're gonna swap you out, and you so you can go out and and, and watch them, and you can bring that bring bring us back some more guests, oh, yeah, and, and rejoin us. Uh, and so we're gonna be joined now by Juliet Whitaker, who just won the girls' mile in four thirty seven twenty three. The place erupted; it was so loud. Juliet, come on in and join us. We'll swap you in where Trayvon was sitting. This is embarrassing right now. <laughs> I got so much, my bad people. <laughs> Still straight got the spikes in, on. straight. Yeah, the, the, we should have like the little uh, rubber yeah, yeah, like the, walkway to the seat for all the kids after. So you could just grab yeah that mic. So congrats. <laughs> Thank you. How are you feeling? That was, I mean, you finished three minutes ago. Yeah, I'm pretty tired still, <laughs> but very happy. How did the race play out? We were sitting here. We you know we got to see little bits, but we were we were speaking with Trayvon. So how did it go? Yeah, I honestly, I kind of just took it out from the beginning and. I don't know. I had a plan, but during it, it kind of just left my mind, and I just started running. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really know where everyone was behind me. I tried to, like, get glimpses of the big board, but, like, I couldn't really see where people were. So, at the end, it was a bit of a surprise when Sadie started coming up. <laughs> yeah, I guess, like, yeah, the fact that it was an actual really tight race there. Was that your personal best, right? Um, yes, yeah. You had run 438 previously, yes. but now 437. So, like... Her coming up obviously just propelled you to the next level. That seems to be the constant theme now <laughs> with, you know, yeah. what's going on in the high school ranks. Is that like the motivation seeing how well everyone else is doing? Yeah, I think I definitely was inspired by a lot of the races, especially like Natalie Cook. Like she ran an amazing race um, yesterday and the day before. So I was kind of just inspired by that. And yeah, I mean, a lot of the races have come down to like the very end, which honestly helps me a ton because I probably would have backed up a bit too much than I should have. Um, but having like Sadie come up on me, I was able to like kind of switch gears and just finish hard. So we have all our cameras here, but I wish we had one up at the top level because from here I could see where Rasheen Willis was sitting and she was going nuts during your race. Like it's just that that friendship that, that the three of you, the four of you have, I guess like everyone in, in this field and, and the girls in the 800, you guys are all friends. And I think that's like the beautiful thing behind all of the success you guys are having. Yeah, I think it's so great just to have like just stepping up to the line, like having friends, like especially like these meets where, like, my whole team doesn't come. Like, I don't really have any teammates come. So it's nice to have, like, a familiar face on the starting line and just takes a lot of pressure off. So you see how Stanford does at NCAAs. I mean, there's a little bit of an excitement level where you get to be a part of it with Roisin next year. Yeah, no, they did an amazing DMR. And, like, Roisin and I have always been talking about, like, trying to do a DMR together. And we did one, you know, last week. So it was so cool just to watch them and, like, Hopefully we're like, that'll be us next year. Is that a conversation going on behind the scene at these meets? Like, where should we go to school? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, honestly. We kind of all just like, at least like Roisin and I, we just happen to be on the same like visits a lot of the time. So we would talk about it there. But like, other than that, we haven't really talked. We've tried to talk a little bit to Sophia, but we want to respect everyone's journeys and, you know, everyone's school. Like, the same schools aren't going to be the right fit for uh, different people, so... So Are you guys going to be roommates? Um, so actually, Stanford, you're not allowed to have room with people on the same team as you. So we'll be having different roommates, but we're hoping we'll be in at least in like the same building. That'll be fine. So can you kind of walk us through this season? Because like for you, there's the 800 that sits at number three all time, the 1K record. And now this puts you high up on, on the list as well. So uh, how have things gone just so right for you this season? Yeah, I honestly, it's funny that it ended so well because the beginning was not great at all. Like, I had a stress fracture in my foot, so I was out for a few weeks, and I had to miss a lot of meets that I was, like, really looking forward to. 
Um, but I think just having to miss those meets, it made me just so much pumped, like, to go to the next meet. And, yeah, I just have been racing, like, really comfortable. Like, things have just felt, like, a lot easier than it has in the past. So I think it just boosted my confidence a lot. How fast do we think we're going outdoors? Oh, I don't know. I hope for the low 40, 430s. So hopefully we'll get down there. Maybe break 430. We'll see. <laughs> we just asked this to the boys uh, high school winner, but it's like kind of from your vantage point, like what's what's the reason why everyone's running so fast? <laughs> That's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I honestly just think seeing each other do like so well has like just inspired us a lot. Like Roisin and Sophia, you know, watching them do their 800s, like when they ran too flat at Boston, like it just inspired and motivated me a lot. So I think that's just, just there's such an energy of just like so many people like selling this year. And I think that's just like kind of boosted up everyone else. How was it coming to this meet, this atmosphere, you know, New Balance? She's at the Milrose game. She won the, the mile there. So like two really huge wins here this season. Yeah, no, yeah, it's great to be back. Like, especially cause you know, the past few years, New Balance has been canceled. So the last time I was here was, I was a freshman running in the freshman mile. So it's crazy to think how far I've come. And it's just been so great being back at this race. It's like the ultimate side-by-side -side, like Instagram post, like how it started, how it finished. And yeah. it's like, the, for, but the, oddly enough, there's nothing in between. Started really well, <laughs> yeah. middle, yeah. screen went black, also <laughs> finished well. The Olympic trials experience last year, how did that sort of, I guess, to take a couple steps back to, you know, earlier in the fall, how did that sort of like feed into, you know, that momentum you had into the fall season and then really prepping to get back on the track? Yeah, it definitely just boosted my confidence. Um, and it just made me show up to starting lines a lot more confident in my training um, and where I was at that minute. Um, and yeah, it just boosted a lot for me. I asked you this yesterday, kind of like, do you still get nervous for, for high school races? And you said yes, because you know sometimes like there's even more pressure to perform at a stage like this. So today, how were the nerves? I was pretty nervous. I was excited just getting here. I think a lot was just like anxiously waiting around, like especially, you know, people raced Friday and like we're not racing until Sunday afternoon. So I think seeing all the posts on Instagram and stuff, I'm like, oh, I just like want to be out there running. Um, so I was definitely pretty nervous earlier on. But once I got here, um, I just got excited. Just the stands. I have a whole bunch of family here. Um, so it was just so great. Any plans while you're in New York? Um, I think I was gonna. We were gonna try and go find a milkshake place to have milkshake. Nice. So <laughs> that'll be good. That's an awesome reward. Uh, <laughs> I think that's that's all I've got, Kyle. Do you have any? I guess my uh, my one last question. You know, obviously we've been talking to a lot of high schoolers and also the pros who've done it. And I, I keep asking everyone like, who are your favorite pros? Yeah. Unfortunately, Trey just had to run out and you missed <laughs> Corey and Emma yesterday. But who are your favorite professional runners that you're following? Yeah. I mean, I like a lot. I feel like it's hard to pick a favorite, but um. Definitely Heather McLean. Yes. I love her. I think she's just such, like, I honestly, like, I hate to say it, but I didn't really know much about her, like, last year. Um, but just, like, hearing a bunch of podcasts of her talking about, like, what she's gone through to get here and, like, just her, like, making it to the Olympics was just so inspiring. So, yeah. She listens to the Sidious Mac podcast. No way. Oh, no way. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> well, so do you, uh, do you uh, since you told me yesterday you listened to the Sidious Mac podcast, do you read the Lab Count newsletter? I have read a few. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> pretty good. I have. Are you a subscriber, though? I am not. Oh, it's will. hard to make that conversion. <laughs> I will. If we'll you subscribe, then I'll introduce you to Heather. And, you know, oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Deal. <laughs> Deal brokered here. Uh, Juliet, thank you so much for doing this. Thank um, you. I'm excited for the people. This is the first time they'll hear about it. We're working on a light, nice little mini doc sort of project on yeah. like the girls' uh, 800. And, you know, Juliet's one of the, the people that we're featuring. And so that's on the horizon. Th good things to come. And yeah. so thanks, Winning thanks today again. really helped out. Oh, yeah, definitely <laughs> helped the project. So thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sweet. Congrats. Awesome. So I think we've got a couple more sprint, ra sprint races left. Uh, Trayvon will be rejoining us because we've just sent him out into the field to go and get us more gas. Yeah. So. It's been really fun. I think, uh, yeah, I it's keep saying like, this is controlled chaos. Like we don't know who's going to come in at any point. We're just kind of hanging out, watching races on, the, on our computers while they're going on in the background, talking to the best athletes in the world and also the best high schoolers. Um, but like the crowd is getting so loud outside. It feels good. I mean, like, cause we, we, we were at stadiums last year, you know, at the Olympic trials and, and where, you know, we were in Texas, Kansas city, New York. And like, we just had, hadn't had that in a while. And we experienced our first taste of it really at Miller's games. And then this time around, like now 
Track is back. It, ne it never really went anywhere, but it is full on back. Well, the argument that I always say is that like indoor, like I know people try to de-emphasize it. You know, outdoors is where it's at. Like the indoor season, you know, that's just a tune up. Like when you get in a stadium like this and you hear the noise, like we did at the Millrose games, it's just like if you're trying to attract new fans, that's where you go, and like yeah. that's where you start. I would love to bring someone who'd never been to a track. I've done it before. Who've never been to a track meet before? Bring them to a meet like this or Millrose at the Armory, and it's like you've got a new fan. Yeah, hundred percent. And like they'll, I think people are always just blown away when you, the, the, you kind of have to have someone like you or I like next to them. But I mean, to there are other to, people too that there's you other could people, be next yeah. to. Yeah, but to kind of like put it into context, like she just ran a four thirty-seven mile, and like obviously the big light that goes off is like that's not what i ran in gym class like so long ago and so there's that entry point and then just in general i feel like when you're up close and you see what a you know high level 60 looks like then you're just like wow well that's the thing like at a meet like this you can legitimately just like be banging on the track in lane six while yeah. the races are on like you can just walk up and be that close and there's just not that many opportunities other place in the world that you can be that close maybe like oslo that's yeah, yeah. like one stadium that comes to mind <laughs> where you can do it but like besides that most outdoor tracks that's that opportunity doesn't exist so it's so kind of like i know i like to pick your brain sometimes about your sort of personal career but when you had you know the milrose moment as a high schooler Juliet just had that awesome moment, and and Gary had that awesome moment. What, where does that, like, what, do you, how do you feed off of that over the next couple of months? And is there a little bit of a caution that you also a exercise? Yeah, I think like when you're in high school, you're constantly trying to convince yourself that you deserve to be at that next level. And when you have a big breakout race, then it's almost like immediately like, wow, I can do that thing that I think. And for me, and you know, we've talked to a lot of the high schoolers there like, and they wanna be at the next level, like they wanna be pros. And the thing that I always experienced whenever I did have those big moments was I like just started buying in a little bit more to this big picture idea that I could do what I wanna do when I grow up. And you know, I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to do exactly what I wanna do when I grow up. Most people don't, um, but you know, you don't necessarily get to see that in every career path, but in professional running, you do have the opportunity to see yourself like yeah. legitimate, like literally making strides towards that goal. When, when this moment happens and like you have to go on to, to college before that, there's always like the final race. And like, I guess for some of these athletes, there is an outdoor season ahead, but sometimes like they might go on and do another sport in the spring. That final race, like, how do you try and keep the emotions in check and, and make it count? Because we are seeing performances where they're, they're performing at that level, and, like, the emotion can overwhelm you. Well, I think the idea is, like, even you want to be in the moment, but then the second the moment's over, you're looking to what's next. So it's like, oh, this is the last, like, indoor nationals of your career. It's like, the second it's over, we already heard it. Like, people start looking towards yeah. outdoor. And the second it's the last race of your high school career, you're looking towards college. And we talked about it with Corey and Emma yesterday. It's just like, what's next? What's next? Like, you back from, you're back from the Olympics, and you're already starting to think about the race that comes next after coming off the pinnacle of the sport. And that mindset, I think, is really unique to track in the sense that there's always something else. Maybe sometimes that's arguably a problem because we have a tendency to, like, pretend like not everything's that important. Things are only yeah. as important as you make them. Uh, but we are definitely a very future-oriented sport of, you know, we're building. We're always building. And everyone's always convinced the next race is going to be the best race. Yeah. No, and it's crazy when sometimes, like, that what's next doesn't just stop at, a at like, a New Balance Nationals. It's, like... Olympic trials and yeah well, for high schoolers yeah. it's like you know it's crazy so we've got the 60 meter dash on the track right now Trayvon's out there he'll be bringing us those guests yeah. but like all right let's take a wild guess like what wh my question to him is like now that you get to see it like kind of up in person like what wows you I guess what has wowed you so far as a distance fan of the way that these high schoolers are, are carrying themselves. I mean, I, I am so impressed by the Newberry Park kids and like they are celebrities. Yeah. They are being swarmed. People are asking them for pictures and it's kind of overwhelming for, you know, a 16 year old kid to be put on a pet. We see it with, you know, like real life celebrities yeah. and how it's a tough thing to handle. And these kids are handling it with such grace. Uh, and so just in that sense, I think we didn't have to deal with that 
back in my day. Not that I was running as fast as they were. Mac, Mac ran 402 in high school. I don't know if you've ever heard that before. So maybe he was dealing with it. But, like, we didn't have the same celebrity that they have now with social media, YouTube channels. And so they're, I feel like they're just maturing in a different way that a lot of other athletes maybe don't get until college or as a professional. Yeah. Even on the flip side, I think, like, it's just, like, in general, the overall confidence of when these athletes are good, like, just shining through. Like, the Flower Mound girls from Texas, like, the fact that they subtly, the day before, when they sat down with me on the other video you can find on the City of Smack YouTube channel, uh, is that, like, they're willing to call their shots. And yeah. that's not something, I guess, did you, before Milrose oh 2000? Oh, my God, I would never call a <laughs> shot. I was, like, way too much of a coward to do something like that. And, and in high school, it would have been even worse. Yeah. Like, There's just so much, be- yeah. It was message boards at that time. You're just, like, I feel like, you know, we see a lot of people who maybe don't like taking the lead until they know they can really own the race and I was definitely one of those and I think it was just like an ego thing like I don't want to put myself out there be too vulnerable and it it was probably a flaw and I think that we see that a lot of times in the college and the pro scene and the fearlessness of high school racing of like they do not care they will trade leads six times in a Mm -hmm. race Um, you know they're just taking turns pushing the pace they all want to go fast and you know I think that's an exciting element of being here you, the they had a rabbit in the mile. That's a yeah. really rare thing to have a rabbit at the stage. Obviously, you see the results. Then how many guys ran 402? Like, it works. But that is, I think, what makes high school racing different is the sense that every race kind of becomes a championship race. All in all, do you think you as a high schooler drop parachuting you in through time travel into today's sort of situation would have been a good high schooler? I do think I, I like (laughs) to think, I don't think I'd be quite as good as some of these guys. When we talk about how you'd qualify for this meet, I'd qualify. This is the age of social media. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle, Kyle would crush. (laughs) I think maybe I'd have some followers, but (laughs) I think, uh, the, the advantage that a lot of kids have now where they know what's going on in the sport and they have better access to things. I think part of the reason why I was good was because I was that way when I was in high school. I really, you know, spent a lot of time on die stat and mm-hmm. reading the books and talking to pros, um, you know, sending them emails. Like I'd find an email and shoot one <laughs> off and sometimes I get a response. And so I had that curiosity that all the high school kids n- now have. So I don't necessarily think I would benefit from that much. Maybe uh, some super spikes would help. But yeah, you know what I think is going to be a, a good problem to sort of have down the road is like when when all these kids are doing so well, and we're seeing it at the college level right now, where like the times it took to make it to NCAA's are competitive with like what it takes to get a pro contract nowadays. Yeah. That if this continues even from this high school level and the high school kids are doing such a good job of marketing themselves and putting themselves out there. Like it's a good thing. Cause like we're going to have a lot of potential pros who get it. I think in terms of just like for the longest time, everyone's talked about how the athletes have to build a brand for themselves and like put themselves out there more and, you know, market themselves better. These high school kids are thriving at it. There's college kids who are doing it really well. So to all the brands out there, like, you better have a good marketing budget because you're going to have like uh, a lot of people to pick from. I think historically brands have had to convince athletes yes. to market themselves. Uh, runners just like to focus and do their own thing. But now what's happening is like the athletes want to market themselves and they're looking for brands that will help them on that journey. And, you know, that's why I think you see athletes like, Emma and Corey here and like they have billboards of them, but it's like, those are athletes who are excited to be a part of that. They want to be at this meet. They want to come meet the high schoolers. They want to take pictures. They want to have these conversations with kids and uh, finding the athletes that align with that sort of vision, I think is going to be easier and easier as time goes on. Yeah. And sometimes like, it's like the athletes are just doing so much that even the brands are like, slow down, slow down. We yeah, want to do yeah. <laughs> So no, it's, it's, it's a good problem to have in the sport because you know, there's a bunch of rising stars on the horizon. All right. So rising stars, I was thinking, I was talking actually with my mom the other day about, so I came to the armory for nationals really early on in high school. Like I was a sophomore, you know, for reference, I ran 955 for two mile 
uh, as a high school sophomore and I came to the national meet, they had like basically an open entry for the 5k <laughs> and I came and, uh, my coach, you know, talked me through, got me hyped up that I was able to do a 5k. What is it? 25 laps <laughs> yeah. for, you know, a barely sub 10 minute guy. Um, a little different than cross country. And I came out and he told me I could break, you know, 16 minutes for a 5k. I think I barely snuck under 17 minutes. The last few laps I was, I threw up on the armory track. And I, 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 I think like they were, they threw some, like they were cleaning it up like mid race. I was throwing up on the track. And after I got off the, the, my coach, I was like, what the heck? Like you said, I could break 16 minutes and that I was ready for this. And my coach's line was just like, what was I going to do? Tell you, you weren't ready. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited now because we've got a recurring guest, the first ever yes. two time guest on after the final lap. Unbelievable. I, um, he called his shot. He's taking the spikes off. I'm running to, I had to run off camera for one second, but I'll be right back. I feel yeah. really confident that Justin's going to be able to hold this down. For yeah, a minute. absolutely. Justin and Trayvon rejoining us now. He'll be back. So Trayvon, you got the chance to go out there, see the next generation of stars up close. Justin Braun coming away with the win in the 60. So how'd they look up close? Man, it's, it was a good race, man. I can't, I can't lie to you. Uh, I see as soon as he stood up and started separating, he was about to run fast. Yeah, that's gotta be cool, I guess, that you, uh, as a, just kind of like a talent that you have like that's a six second race but you were able to already just in the first time you've seen it you haven't seen the replay or anything like that pick up on on things that it like impressed you or that you thought were strong so like very early on like what are what are some of the things that stood out to you about him oh like i said what oh uh, once he stood up uh, i like this form uh, i like how he drove well obviously um, and carried himself through the race, kept his composure, even at the beginning where it was almost like a blanket slate. Uh, everybody was pretty much in the same in the same lining of each other, but then he stood up, he separated himself, uh, he showed us that he showed he had strength and his composure and staying confident and ran through the line. When we see a race like that, like as a fan and some of the people in the stands, like for them, it's not until they see the you know results on the board that they know who won. Yeah. When did you know he won the race? Well, I mean, it was I was looking up on the board. Okay, as well. it was um, close. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, I, I had no doubt that, you know, he was coming with a mentality to win. Obviously, when you come in with the chip on your shoulder being, you know, the fastest seed coming in, uh, you, you expect him to go out there and do what he do, right? So, yeah, and he delivered. Justin, welcome back. I guess when it when it comes to just yesterday, we asked, it was like, oh, so like, what do you got? And you're like, I'm in the 16. We're like, oh, good luck. And you're like, yeah, you're the top seed. You knew you had a little bit of pressure coming into it. Did you feel that like in, in the lead up to the race? Um, no. The That's the great. Day, I, right? I'm, I'm just a competitor at the end of the day, and so are those guys. So I mean, it's hard to feel the pressure when they want the win just as bad as I do. So it was a great race. I had fun out there. It's been less than 24 hours since since your last race. I guess take us through what happened when, when you left the armory yesterday. You went back to, to the hotel. Like, what what did you do to kind of come back here and, and be able to pull off this, this win? Um, pretty simple. In my eyes, recovery, less is more. Um, went home, did a little stretch, um, ate some food, and slept. <laughs> Perfect. I oh, mean, there's not much you can do in a short meet like this. If it was spread out a couple of days, I could do a little more. But in my eyes, less is more at this point. Trayvon, it sounds like he has, like, the all-business side of things oh, down yeah. pat already. Yeah, yeah, you definitely know, man. I, and I think that is very important, especially going on to uh, more and more into your career, understanding, like, what you're able to deal with and how you be able to deal with those situations of less time to be able to do recovery situations. So, like, I speak for my thing. My instance, like when I was at World Indoors in 2016, we had three rounds all in one day. Mm -hmm. So it was all about how to recover uh, and get the most out of that recovery in such a short span. So continue to understand uh, those type of situations and be able to try to adjust and adapt to those because you will be dealt with those. Yep. So you're headed to USC next year, right? Yes. And so your colleagues, I guess, your, your Team USA teammates, Michael Norman, Rye Benjamin, like, what have you heard sort of about the program there that kind of has led to, to their success uh, and that he's got something to look forward to? Well, you know, that great program uh, obviously had a lot of success over the years, so understand when you're going into that, those uh, facilities is just wanting to be headstrong about what you want to do. Uh, definitely keep focus and obviously set your goals and go in and attack that. So, Justin, do you have any pressing questions? We did it for you yesterday with Emma and Corey, but here's Trayvon. You get to pick his brain about anything. Um, 
Yeah, talking about your injuries again, what was one thing that kept your head straight on what you wanted to accomplish in this sport and how you're going to do it with these setbacks? Yeah, uh, so my biggest thing is I want to make sure that I set an example for, you know, like people like you yourself and, and other youths coming up on to not give up, even in those tough situations, because in life you're going to be dealt with trials, like constantly, man. Like life does not get easier. Uh, things are going to always be thrown at you. Like life is going to throw curveballs all the time. Uh, it's how do you got to be prepared or whenever you take these situations and understand that they can build character to you. You just got to get back up. You can't look at it as like, oh, man, this situation has happened. Now I got to sit and dwell in it. Like, no, you get past it. You let you learn from it. And you keep moving forward. So with that, just you got to just stay focused on what you can control in that moment. And it's all about how you react to situations. So it's either you're going to give up or you're going to keep moving. So do you think because you stepped back and said, okay, this is just a part of it, you're a better spinner because of it today? Oh, definitely. Uh, and I think it built more so to my character as well. Like I, I found a lot of, I found a lot more about myself in my injuries. Uh, I've been, I was able to learn a lot of things that I didn't know about myself. And I feel like it built me to be a better person of who I am today. So I, I think a lot of, a lot of those, situations where we feel like we took L's. It's a lot of lessons in those in those trials, man. I don't think it's something bad that many people would take away from those situations. You just got to sit down and really think and hone in on what can you learn from it. Do you have any? Yeah, so, I mean, Trey, when you were in high school, you probably thought everything was going to be perfect, right? Like, of course, you'd show up to NCAAs, you'd win a few titles, you'd win the trials, go to the Olympics, and you just win a couple, you know, I guess. Is there anything that you would tell your high school self about that, if you could speak with him now? Don't look too far in the future, yo. Like, I thought for myself, when I when I came into college, I was going to wreck ship. I was going to leave college, become a pro. I was just going to be unstoppable. And literally, my first year of being pro, I got hurt. So I say don't look too far in the future of trying to claim things that haven't even came yet. So you have to literally live in the moment. Like live in today, like whatever you've done in that in that moment, like right now, you take all this in. Tomorrow you go to practice, only be in practice, only be in depth with what's going on in those 24 hours. Don't get too far ahead because that time has yet to come and you don't know what's going to come in the, in the meat of that, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's, for me, that's what I, I would tell my younger self is don't get too far ahead because you, that's how a lot of people get disappointed. I think Corey said that same thing yeah, to you yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I was, was going to say that, yeah. So, I mean, the, BF the BF parallels, practice. yeah. At practice, be at practice. Yeah. I think that's yeah. A, a really good Like, I tell a lot, of, a lot of NCAA athletes, especially that come through Baylor, like, after, like what I've done and what the program has, has offered as well, everybody come in like, oh, I want to be a pro athlete. Well, you haven't even stepped in the NCAA yet and did anything, you yeah. know? So, you, it's, it's, it's interesting to me that people come in and think so, so far ahead. Uh, and I, I, like myself, had picked up that because things had started changing so fast in my life. But I would say, like, stay stay consistent in being in that moment, yo. Like, I came into NCAA saying I want to win NCAAs. I didn't come in. Like, you guys, my coach, I've never talked about being a pro when I was in NCAA. Yeah. I didn't think about being pro until I actually got a medal, you know, at Worlds. So be in the moment because when you get too far ahead, you're not even working on the little things that's going to be able to get you there. You're just thinking about, oh, when I get there, I'm going to win. Well, have you prepared yet? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you got to think of those things. Well, it's like some of your advice is like not to look too far ahead. I think like as track fans, like we can start to think it's like the two of you might be lining up like in a hundred at a USA is like in like two or three years. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that's gotta be, that's going to be pretty cool to kind of look back on it. Just like, just based off this moment that we're in right now. Just you called your shot yesterday. How fast are you running in the hundred this year? Mm, my coach says 10-1 is in range. Um, I think I think I can do that. I'm running real fast. I didn't get a PR today in the 60, but I, I know for a fact I could have run faster. The last 5, 10 meters, I kind of pulled up with my hamstring. So for a good chunk of that in 60 meters, I wasn't putting out what I could put out. So I think 10-1, 10-2 range, that's very possible, assuming everything goes mm -hmm. right. Don't limit yourself, man. My freshman year of college, I couldn't break 665, and I went 992. <laughs> so don't don't limit yourself to no 10-1, bro. Like, yeah. even the next year, I went 958, and then I ended up running 984 at 19 years old. Yeah. So no, yeah. don't never limit yourself based off the 60. Like, so with the Worlds coming up and mm -hmm. stuff, um, mm -hmm. I like to be there. I want to run the quarter there. What do you think are some first steps? Is like I'm getting kind of – into the realm of like running some serious times, I think. So what do you think is a, a good starting next step for me? 
man, you just got to keep being consistent. Because you can never call it, man. Like I said, like life life throws everything at you. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. Like, yeah. like I say, from my past experience, man, when I went to the World Trials in 2015, I didn't know I was going to run 9-8 in the prelims. Yeah. It just happened. Like, you're not... I don't think you need to think too much on what's going to happen that day at the trials when you go and compete. Just literally hone in on everything that you need to focus on in practice. And when it's time to race, it's going to happen. You know. Yeah. So just hone in on those little details. Like, yeah. where can you be stronger? Like, where can you be more technically sound? I, I think you need to think about those things. So then when it comes to racing, your body has built that muscle memory to be able to do that without you having to think about it. Yeah. And that's when uh, racing becomes actually easy. So I think just, just continue to be – a student of the game, man. Just don't be a track athlete. Be a student. Yeah. Just like how you go to school to gain an education, to be able to understand this knowledge. So if somebody asks you about it, you're there. You have to be the same thing. Which it has to be the same thing with track and field. You have to be so in tune with it that your body just naturally knows how to do something. Yeah, my coach has done a great job with that. Like I, I think I know a lot more than like the average high score about track. But I like to. Uh, I hope I am. Um, <laughs> I think that's what makes me better than some people. Um, I mean, I wasn't always fast. Um, granted, I did run fast early, but when I did start, I was like 14, running like 58s in the 400. And so literally a year later, I broke 50 for the first time. So it all kind of like stacked on. I don't want to say at once for me, but it's definitely been a process so i know i'm gonna keep working at it i know i can get faster because i've been doing it for this long Love that. i'm excited for it so what's next i mean do you, do you have any more indoor meets <laughs> uh no i'm done because i'm from ohio yeah, so yeah. it's very very cold it's just not it's not sprint weather so i'm probably not gonna compete for the next two and a half months wow well i just put in work yeah, yeah that's work. what we've had to do because we can't like the last five weeks I've that's the only time I've been able to sprint since November so the fact that I'm here Crazy. now I'm very happy <laughs> I can win the 60 and the 400 you don't see that a lot um so I'm I'm happy considering our pretty crappy training conditions and it's great it's, that's it's how a, you build yeah. grit it's a I'm happy with it my coach is, is my best interest in mind he's gonna work for me he's gonna work with me and he's He's going to take me to greatness in the next year. Coach Quincy Watts will. Yep. And then one day, maybe you'll join Trayvon in track club. I'm hoping, we were I'm, I'm hoping to make 24. Right now, Why y'all trying to make me a coach kids? early? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an agent. I want to be an agent right, first. You be agent, an agent first. You be his agent. <laughs> no. Compromise. Perfect. No. Well, I love this moment just because, like, you know, we're Yankee fans, so we've seen, like, when Todd Frazier, like, there was a photo of him like when he was a little kid and Derek Jeter was like right next to him and then they were teammates later on. I hope we can clip this and it'll go viral in like 2024, 2028. Yeah, I've seen like when you guys are both like Trey Young and Kevin Durant next to each other. Exactly. In this situation, Olympic teammates down the road, I think. Make it 2024, 2028, I might be too old. I'm I'm really (laughs) trying for 24. I I really think that's my year. Yeah, make it 2024. 2028, I don't know. I want to be making people money by now. We're going to make a million dollars, you know what I'm saying? You'll, you'll, be, you'll be the first one on call. Well, well, hey, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Networking. This is the LinkedIn of uh, yeah. track field right now. Yeah, make connections early. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, thank you so much for, for joining us again. And this time around, now you get to celebrate, right? Like this, you're I'm done. done. I'm going. No, I have a 10-hour car ride home. Oh, so, no. But I have school tomorrow, so I think my celebration will probably be like, Next Wednesday or something. I don't know. Yeah. Bring that backpack to school. Let everyone know what's up. I hope you wear the crown. It's, oh, the your crown. Your head looks dude. empty right now without it. I, 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 like the, I like the crown more than the medals, actually. <laughs> yeah. All like right. the little paper crowns. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Justin, thanks so much for joining us again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Congrats, man. Sweet. Good job, man. Good stuff. I appreciate it. Yeah. So soon we'll have the girl 60 winner. That race was won. The race was won in 7.55. It's pretty cool to see someone, like, really take in everything that you're saying, right? Like, I feel like you were saying earlier with Gary, like, you can get his energy and, like, the way he carries himself. I felt just yeah, similar. Yeah, He definitely seemed, like, coachable for sure. Yeah. yeah he definitely seemed coachable. Seems like, and he's got range. He's, he's like mostly talking about the four. The 6400 yeah. 60, 60, double. Like. He definitely got range. If he's running the 400 and also the 60, he's, so he's definitely in the midst of 61, 2, and 4 for sure. Is that people just taking a page out of Fred's book now? Like Probably, man. <laughs> hey, 
But you know, a lot of a lot of coaches, especially like in AAU, try to coach that, like try to coach sprinters to be able to go all the way up to the four. Yeah. Uh, my coach didn't have no success with that because I was not doing it. <laughs> but you know, besides that, man, a lot of a lot of young athletes coming up, like in AAU and stuff, like the coaches love to coach them from like sixty one. Two, four. Like if you're a sprinter. Did you ever try any other events? Did you ever try hurdles or long jump? I did high jump. Uh, I did long. I did long jump when I was a kid, kid. But for the most part, like I did high jump in high school. But besides that, nah. Could you do the hurdles or like if you nah. needed to? <laughs> no. I'm not doing no hurdles. Like, so nah. we on Twitter, you obviously saw when Grant and Rye challenged each other to like a 200 meter hurdle race. Yeah. So we were thinking like if we hypothetically set up like a day of like duels like if we put that race on and then after that like it was you head to head against someone else in an off distance yeah what would the event be is it got to be like a 150 or like a what would uh, the event be and who would you want to challenge in that that'd be tough yo i don't know i don't know man that's a that's a tough one a 150 versus noah is that close oh that could be good That'd actually be nice. <laughs> That'd actually be nice. I'm not even going to lie to you. A lot of people will pick Noah, obviously, because of his his fast uh, 200. But that'll... Uh, well, you have him in the 100. Yeah, that'll that'll be nice. I ain't going to lie. Because, I, I mean, I run I run some fast 150s on a free lap in practice. So I can't, I can't you know, neglect that. Um, that'll... I ain't gonna lie, that'd be nice. That'd All be right. nice. All right, that's the challenge. Pencil that one in. I All feel right. like be Noah nice. too. Like he's someone who he'd be up for it. I think. Yeah. He's someone who, uh, similar to yourself, like thinks about the sport as a whole and like what can we do better. Yeah. And you know, I see him having like the the, the conversations, Twitter spaces. the Twitter spaces. Like he yeah. thinks about things, and I I feel like he's someone who could get behind uh, the the pay per view matchups. Cause I was thinking about doing uh the Boston, the Boston uh, meet where they do the 150. I thought about On the doing road. that. Yeah, yeah. Because like I said, man, I I put down some crazy numbers in practice in the 150. Like you know, I don't really. Do you want to share like, them or no? Huh? Do you want to share them or is that top secret too? No, nah, that's top secret, man. <laughs> like like I literally I, I be putting down some fast stuff. I just I I think I really want to try to take a wing at it. Let's but that'd go. be dope though. Like if they if they said it, like. If, if me and him did like a 150 at that Boston meet, I think that'll bring a lot of eyes. I know, like obviously with his 200 strength and obviously my 100 strength, I think it'd be it'd be smooth. I think I definitely think you know it'll be a good race for sure. All right, so we got I guess at least one more guest here. We're bringing him in, sitting right next to Trayvon. Yes, it's sir. Batman is in the house. Olympian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Man, my dog man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. FLA yeah. finest. You have you watched the new Batman movie yet? I haven't seen it. I yet. have not seen it yet. Yeah, no, me man. neither. But it's crushing it at the box office <laughs> yeah it's crushing it so since 2018 that was the last time you were racing yes. on the track and uh -huh. ever since then it's kind of been you put the coach hat on that's right how's that been it's been great it's been an amazing journey um i started my track program back in 2015 okay and i started my program because track saved my life i was a you know project kid that came section eight and track gave me the opportunity to go to college get my college degree and um, make my life so much better. So now it's my job to give back to the youth because that's the foundation, right? And too many Olympians don't go back and 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 pull their heart into the youth, right? Because it starts there. So um, it's been a great journey so far. You know, working with kids, developing kids, teaching them, you know, the, the sport of track and field. And my goal, my ultimate goal is to get these kids in school. Too many kids don't go to college. You know, in my neighborhood, you know, they resort to selling dope or working at McDonald's. So I'm giving these kids an outlet. I'm giving the kids something to look forward to. And that's why I'm doing it. I love it. So now, six, seven years you've been doing it. Do you have a number of kids, obviously, in college now? Absolutely. Right now, I'm 12 for 12. So I got 12 kids went to college. I got 12 kids with full scholarships. And the number going to keep growing. You know, I started my club with young kids. And it's amazing how when I started my club, my youngest kid was 12 years old. And now I watched him run at NCAA this past weekend. So, and... You know, the, the, the best part about it is kids coming to me say, Coach Batman, I love you. Thank you for, you know, everything you taught me. Because I teach a mindset, accountability, work ethic. On the next level, everybody's good. So what's going to separate you is the mindset and how hard you work. Everybody's talented. Everybody got good technique. Everybody can, do, can turn over fast. But it's a little bit in between is going to make you Olympic champion one day. So I've covered you as an athlete since 2012. Like, I remember us at Florida Relays in, like, yeah, 2013. And yeah. I've seen you get emotional at the tracks. Like, moments like that when mm -hmm. you're dealing with these athletes that you have had a role in helping change their lives. Yeah. Does it ever bring you to tears? Yes. Um, it hasn't been 
a, a absolute terrible story to where I'm like, man, I saved this kid's life. But it's been some situations where um, a kid come to me and say, I never, ever achieved nothing in my life. And now I'm a national champion. I got a full scholarship. And before I was about to quit track, you know, before I was. But you believed in me. So my biggest thing is, you know, um, of course, my daughter Shanti has success, but no one's better than no one. And I love on each kid the same from my slowest to my fastest. You know, they all on the same plateau. Nobody getting checked for it. Nobody's going getting the contract. Nobody's bullet bro mail yet. But they trying to elevate themselves to that level. So I think that matters. Right. Um, I could tell you a good story is a year ago, a kid out of West Virginia. His dad come to me, he said, can you take a picture of my son? He said, give him some words of encouragement. I'm talking to this kid, and I didn't know how good the kid was. I wasn't sure. But the kid uh, went first round last year in the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. And he flew me out to his meet, to, um, to his game, and thanks to me and the words I gave him, he ended up being an NFL star. So you never know who you might touch along your journey. But so, so far, nothing emotional to the point where I come to tears, but – you know, I have touched some kids over the, over the last couple of years. Was there a certain person in your career that is the inspiration now for you as a coach that, you know, you really try to channel in their energy that you're passing on? Absolutely. Jesse Hope. God bless the dead. Um, God bless the soul. Um, he invested in me and believed in me when nobody else did. Right. And I was a little kid out of Miami, Florida, and I wasn't the best kid. Right. I was a little guy trying to, you know, make my way through Liberty City. And this guy paid for all my, he paid for all my um, track meets to the Junior Olympics. He paid the way for me to get where I needed to go. And I hated track at one point because I was getting my, my behind kicked. But then I started winning, and it's like, man, thanks to him for keeping me into it. And I'm the first, I'm the first in my family to get my college degree. So I went to college, and I did something positive just by running my, with my legs. And then at 19, I was a pro athlete. So And at 20 years old, I was a world champion. So... You know, going from 13 to wanting to quit to now being a world champion and being one of the most decorated foreign hurdles of all time when they told me 15 strides wouldn't work. And they told me I was too small to run the hurdles. And they say the way I run was just not professional. But I made a name for myself, right? And the world know Batman. So I thank God for Coach Hope. Because Coach Hope, you know, taught me work ethic. He taught me mindset. He taught me accountability. He taught me um, it's the Batman show, like that confidence part of it. So... I owe all grace to him, and I try to imp incorporate the things he did for me, right? You know, just install confidence. Confidence is everything. You could be in the – bro, I can tell you, you could be in the best shape of your life in Olympic Games and choke. You overthink. You know, you overwhelm. You get anxiety. you like, you know, and confidence is everything. Because when you play basketball, you're up by 30 points. The free throw is easy. But when you got to make that free throw to tie the game or win it, it's a little bit much harder. So – that's just part of life. So that's the confidence part he taught me. And I try to install that same confidence in these kids. So we've seen, like, the high schoolers come in and be completely starstruck by Trey. And, you know, we had Emma and Quirion on yesterday. Yes. And, you know, now we're seeing the next generation. I'm sure Rye looked up to you. Yeah. And who, were, who were, was the guy that you had a picture of on your bedroom wall? You know what? Um, I came up in the Michael Johnson era. Mm. The gold spikes. And <laughs> I want to be like Michael Johnson. Yeah. Actually... I'm going to tell you this funny story. I wanted to go to Baylor because of Michael Johnson. <laughs> Coach Clyde Hart told me I wasn't good enough to get a full ride. You heard it here first. <laughs> Clyde Hart, you was wrong. You're wrong, Clyde Hart. <laughs> I am good he enough. He <laughs> told me that the type of hurdle he was looking for, it wasn't me. I was just too small. All right? And, but Michael Johnson, the reason I wanted to go to Baylor. Coach Hart is a great coach. He's legendary. But Coach Hart, you was wrong this time. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Derek Atkins or something. He's, just, he's the one who got me into track yeah. for my hometown. No, everybody wanted to be like Mike. Yeah. You know, Mike, Mike had yeah, the, the golden spikes. And, you know, I wasn't a track head. I was a foot, I'm a, come from a football city, you know. We produce more NFL players than any other city in, in the damn world. So, football city, all we know is football. And we ran track to get better for football. Yeah. That's the recipe, track football. So, it wasn't I grew up saying, oh, my God, I'm going to be this famous Olympian. That's never my journey. What do you think of now the 400 hurdles? What's going on? Oh, like, do oh you wish God. you were, you could have been in that? <laughs> you know what? Um, it's unreal. Yeah. 45 9, right? So it's a kid, it's kid. I'm an agent now, right? And kids email me like, look, I want you to sponsor me, and my PR is 45 5. And I'm like, got you at 45 9 over hurdles. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but maybe. 
you know, I said it nice way. Look, let's keep working hard, and maybe if you drop your times to this, you're like trying to get a full scholarship, right? But um, they definitely put the barrier high, not just the men, the women, 51-4. You ever think in the history of track and field, 47-12 get fifth. <laughs> 47 0 get fourth. Like, oh, I ran 47 0 and it took fourth. Like, that'd be kidding me. <laughs> and he, only thing it is, the Olympic experience. Because only the medalists get paid with the endorsement deals and all that stuff. Fourth and fifth, just smacking the ass and congratulations. Yeah. So, you know, it, the game has changed. And I wish I was in this era because I was a competitor. That's what and I was going to say. Me, I feel like you've was, been there. I was a fifth competitor. And I. You know, Felix Sanchez heightened, you know, because I want to win. And I was willing to do whatever my competitors wouldn't do. I was willing to run from New York to Miami if it took me being a champion. Like, and that's the goal. And I think a, a lot of times kids don't think like that. You know, I was thinking, if you can't outwork me and you're not faster than me, how the heck can you beat me? Yeah. So my, my competitive edge was on another level. Me being a small guy, I'm like, hey, I got to outwork everybody. So I, I wish I was in this era only because – it would have made me that much better. Yeah, did your daughter get it from you too, that competitive edge? Yes, absolutely. So my daughter, she um, started out as a scary athlete. I'm scared. I'm nervous. <laughs> like she was overwhelmed. And, and I think that lions take their cubs out to teach them how to hunt, right? And I think it should be the same for athletes, right? You know, um, Serena and Venus, parents pushed them, right? So I didn't push it to the point where I overwhelmed her, but I created a an animal. I built character. <laughs> if you get the stick in dead last, you better try hard to catch up. And once you got this and this, everything else follows. She, she genetically got it from her pops and her mom, right? <laughs> and with her work ethic, it's unmatched. Like, you know, here, she have not trained in three weeks because she got bad a bad um, stress reaction in her shins. But she cried because she really wanted to run because it's her first ever high school nationals. COVID messed the first two years up. I she think never, I saw her. She was in a boot. Yeah, right? um, she's in a boot. And the doctor told her, don't run. Then he said, let's micromanage it. If she feel anything, it won't up. Stop because it's close to a fracture. And unfortunately, we train in hallways. But um, she went out like, I'm going to go fight no matter what. And I, I feel like her endurance, you know, got the best of her. But I say, look, at the end of the day, every great, great athlete got a story to tell. You know, you watch Bromel go through some adversity throughout his career, and he fought back like a champion. That's what champions do. It's not how we fall down. It's how we get up. So with her, I tried to install that killer. You know, um, it was a method to the madness, putting her on terrible relays, you know, and say, try to catch up. She's been exceptional from the beginning. And I think she's going somewhere. I think she has a bright future ahead of her, and I want to continue to, you know, be that voice and guide her to the right direction. That's amazing. I wanted to see her at USA, man. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's what I was looking for. I was, I was on a start list, like, oh, let me see Shanti up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She actually um, had the Olympic trials qualifier for the one and two last year as a sophomore high school. But it's the journey, right? It's a marathon, not a sprint. So for me, I'm not trying to rush the process. I feel like she never would have hurt her shins. She would have ran 22.6, 22.7. She ran 36.9 her first 300 this year. Hmm. Wow. And she broke the high school national record her second 60. And she haven't ran one ever since. So I just think that if I was chasing times and chasing records, she would have been everywhere and just crushing the records because she would just fit. But, you know, I think everything happened for a reason. After this, she got five weeks off, and we're going to get strong, get ready, because my goal for her to win the World Juniors, mm-hmm. right? And she was upset and crying. I'm like, baby, you're not going to win them all. Is, I, it, is it two different hats, dad and coach? Yes, I had to learn how to separate it. Yeah, because at one point I was a stickler of everything. Like you're not pumping your arms, you're not breathing, you're not doing your technique, or you're not drinking. Like my daughter hate to drink water. She hate to stretch. I'm like, she trained hard. Nobody can outwork her, but she don't want to drink water. <laughs> she don't want to stretch at night. Like she don't want to stretch at all. She don't want to do her drills. Like so, I'm trying to help and teach and mold her. Like over the years, I never did technique, but this is the first year I did technique with her, so it made a big difference. But in my eyes, if I give her everything at a young age, she has no room to grow. Next year, we're going to lift weights for the first time. So um, it's, a, it's a process, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that she's one day is going to be my personal opinion. I think she can make it to the finals at seniors. If she was in shape, she was ready. This year in the 200. What's the reason if we can't make the team or we can win it? Because sometimes you can put a kid in there too early and they get discouraged, right? 
World Juniors this year. Probably next year we'll try it out. But she's fierce. Like, she came to Melrose. She wasn't stressed at all. She was like, let's, let's do it. Oh, she showed up. Yeah. If I feel like she was in closer to the competition, she probably would have ran faster. Because she, she don't mind putting it all on the line. And I think that would make Bromel so good because he's a dog. Like, you know, once you got that dog mentality, it's hard to beat you. Yeah. I was going to almost say, I was like, oh, don't let don't let Gabby Thomas watch this after what you just said. <laughs> but then I just realized, I was like, no, she already beat her at, at, at Milrose. Yeah. Yeah. That's inc- how special was Milrose for you to watch? Um, Milrose was special. It was special because um, I knew going into it, she was prepared. I'm like, okay. I watched it in Walmart. I'm like, okay. Either she's going to win this race or she's going to be close to damn winning because she looked so fluent and she looked so poised and she wasn't stressed. And, you know, sometimes kids can be like, oh, my God, I'm next to Gabby Thomas. Oh, my God, I'm next to Breonna Williams. And they get overwhelmed. She was like, I'm trying to bust some heads, daddy. I'm trying to, I'm trying to beat some people. And the moment she broke the high school national record, I was ecstatic because I never got nowhere near a national record. Right, and that symbolizes one of the greatest high school athletes of all time. Right now, she's sitting on three national records, and she's only a sophomore, she's 16, I mean a junior. So I just feel like she has so much left in the tank, and we talk about legacy, right? And I think she can arguably go down as one of the most decorated high school athletes of all time. So she's something we never seen. Like, she ran 52-4, 52-2 last year in April, and she didn't run no more 400s. And she opened up this year 113 on the flat track and came back and ran 38 flat in the 300, 30 minutes later. So I just think that she has so much range, and I just think she's just so talented. But as a father now, I got to micromanage, right, micromanage what she does. Because to be honest, she got um, pro contracts in front of her. I'm like, no, we're going to school for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So from, from the perspective of, you know, a parent, a coach, and a former athlete, what's it like coming to a meet like this, the New Balance Nationals at the Armory, seeing this environment, seeing this excitement? Like, for the kids, like, what is – it's probably a little different than when you were in high school. You know what? This prepares you for later, right? Because this the bright lights, right? And the Olympic Games is the bright lights. So you go Junior Olympics, you go New Balance Nationals, you go NCAAs, then you go to the Olympic Games. So it teaches you – it's the developmental part, right? You come here and you don't win, you you win, you don't win, and, and it's the journey, and I got to get better, I got to work harder, and voila. But the best part about this is a lot of these kids are not going to be professional athletes, but the work ethic and the passion they bring to it, they're going to be successful in life, right? And Shakira Richardson wasn't the best high school kid her senior year. It was Tamari Davis and Brianna Williams. Mm-hmm. And one year later, she's the fastest woman in the world and ran 1075. So it's always the journey, and the beauty of it is looking back in the archives years later and say, man, this person ran, this person ran it. At, when I came here in New Balance, I wanted 200 New Balance, right? And looking at the list, you got Sonya Richards Ross, you got Addison <laughs> Phoenix, you got myself, and you got um, you know, so many good athletes that ran in the same track meet. Michelle Carter with two shot put in one. So it's like you, you look at this the list and you meet lifelong friends like you know and me Sonya and Allison end up going to the Olympic team together and years later we still friends because it's like man I seen Allison last year I'm like man do it for the old heads <laughs> so they going you know being in this atmosphere learning each other and being around these people a lot of these kids going to the Olympics one day and they're going to be friends there and they're going to say man remember we went to New Balance in 2022 so yeah, that's the beauty of it. I feel like you've got a hard spot right now where it's just like you might have to let some friends down when it's like you're getting recruiting calls and it's like, oh, David Oliver's calling, oh, man. It's man. like, and, and it's worst. like, and then it's like, yo, Robert Johnson's calling, man. These are all <laughs> friends of yours from like your your career as an athlete, and now you've got to put on the the dad role. Oh, it's like, man. what percentage of the recruiting pitch is like first ten minutes? Let's just catch up how everything's been, and after that, it's like, all right, let's talk about my daughter. <laughs> you know what? Um. I think every visit, you know, because I'm a man with character, right? A man with te- with integrity, and I always, you know, I just, my credibility is good, right? Because of who I am, and I never let my fame or success get to me, and I'm a pretty well-liked guy. But it gets tough because I got all these friends that I created over the years. Like, I hung out with most of the coaches when I was a pro athlete, before my daughters or anybody, so... It's tough, right? So they come in the house and they talk to, talk to my child. And the biggest thing is 
I'm gonna put my child in every position to be successful, and I'm putting her where the coach is gonna love on her like I would. That's the biggest thing, because when you're doing well, everybody loves you. But when you're not doing as well, can you help me figure out to get back to the top? Mm-hmm. And I think that's key. So when I pick an institution for my child, I'm gonna pick somewhere where look. I need you to love on her like I would. Now I need you to get elevate her game to the next level. And I'm asked a tough question, like, what can you do different what I'm doing to get to where she got to go? And honestly, if she in school for more than two years, I'm going to be pissed off because I feel <laughs> like she's going to be – it's honest. I'm being a, my honest opinion. She's going to be ready. Bro, Mel was in school two years, and he came out of school running 10 flat, 9-9. Nine, nine. So I think when you got guys like that that's exceptional, like, you know, your Michael Normans, your Trayvon Bro Mel's, your Noah Lyles, your Thing Moe's, they exceptional. I think Mo could have went for out of high school. Only thing her, I think Mo is it, she it was COVID. Yeah. But this kid ran one twenty three in the six hundred indoor. <laughs> we forget about that. So she was gonna run one fifty eight outdoor, easy. So um, one fifty seven as a high school kid. So uh, I think the biggest thing is put her somewhere where they are gonna love on her and help her flourish. I feel like it's all music to your ears, Trayvon. Yeah, yeah no, nah, I mean he's speaking jails for sure, like. A lot of the stuff that I can I can piggyback off of, like with picking the right schools, being around the right people, like people know, like I chose Coach Ford because like how he was as a person to me, you know, like everybody who knew, like same thing like Batman growing up, like I'm from the South Side, like you know what I'm saying, like I got my, my, my homies in jail, like that's just how we grew up, and for me, I wasn't that, like all I knew is gang violence or going to work at Walmart, you know, stuff like that growing up. So when my grades came out to the public, a lot of the schools backed off. But Coach Ford didn't, you know, and I remember, I remember in, our, in my recruiting visit, I told Coach Ford, I said, if I don't get into school, I know where my life going. Like, it was it was the streets. Like, I, I simply knew that just because that's how everybody's life was. That's right. My high school was an F school. I mean, we threw a pizza party because we came in D school. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how bad it was. <laughs> my school was an F school, yeah. too. Yeah. So, like, for, like I, I felt like I owed that loyalty to Coach Ford, you know what I'm saying? So, when I got to college, like, I ain't had no dad. Like, my daddy left when, he was two years, when I was two years old. So, like, Coach Ford was like a father figure to me. So he actually played that role too. So it helped as a coach as well. It's like right. dealing with like those down times of, man, my adductor messing up a hamstring, tweaking or something in practice. He was like deaf for me. So that helped a lot going like going into college and even just like just having like we said like having that dog mentality. Like when I left high school, I was oh he broke nine, he broke ten seconds, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking like oh I should have earned my respect. Like you know what I'm saying? Like people should they see me now? You know what I'm saying? But it's like oh no, it's wind day. He ain't gonna do it without it. It's a, all right, so then when I got to college, I ran. I remember I ran nine seven seven at the uh, at the uh, at the regional, not yet yeah, at a conference meet. And they were like, "Oh, he ain't gonna win nationals." People was making YouTube videos and everything like, oh, "Bro, Mel ain't gonna do this." I said, "Bet." That's why if you watch the prelims of the uh, NCAA's in, in twenty what was twenty fourteen, like in the prelims, I crossed the line. I was throwing up my hands like, "I hope y'all see me now." Like I'm about to win this national title, but y'all playing. So having that dog mentality to go out there, and it's crazy, like, just hearing all this, like, I know for myself, I got to get back to that same mentality. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to attack those moments, you know, every time we step on the line. Like, that Trayvon back then was nothing to mess with. So, like, that mentality that he's talking about, like, it's very important if you want to be a champion. Yes, right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to be, with an individual sport, everybody's going to have, like, their favorites. It ain't no team where, like, you can rely on somebody to win something. It's just you. So you got to have that mentality to go out there and, and tap in and yeah. shoot. If it, man, for him, like, like I, I be rooting for Shanti, dog. I be like, dog, I hope she cut off, dog, because yeah. she, be, she be turned up, yo. Like, when I see her running Mill Rose, I was like, dog. <laughs> I said, shorty is, yeah, she on her way for sure. Like, yeah. man, look. But the grand scheme of thing, I'm going to pick it back up on um, Trayvon, is let's look at it this way. It's one Olympic gold medalist in 100 every four years. What the hell are you going to do different from the next man to get that one medal? And everybody want it. So you got to be a dog. Yeah. Ain't no Look Super at Bowl. it. Ain't no Super you got Bowl one like medal four years, and the medal is won in one race. So you can feel good in the prelims, but feel like crap in the final. So it's a lot that go into it to be champion. So when you, when you achieve things like what Bromel achieved and things that I achieved, people don't look at the small things like, man, I could have woke up with a stomachache. I could have woke up with, you know, diarrhea or food poisoning or, like, you have to run fast when it matters most. So it takes a lot of discipline, takes a lot of desire and some luck and the mindset. Like, yeah. you know, so when, when I teach my daughter and I teach the kids I, I, um, I train, I teach them the moments because, you know, it's bigger than just X and O's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's bigger than that. It's the mental aspect. So uh, I'm blessed to, you know, to be doing this, you know, 
it's, a, it's, it's, it's big. I think after listening to you speak, there's no question why you're 12 for 12. Yeah. You're getting uh, kids to college with scholarships. And Absolutely. Your, your daughter's lucky to have you as a coach yeah. and father. Yeah. 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 And I'll I'm, tell you, I mean, you, you made the point about the one Olympic gold medal. I, I like this thing better. Uh, yeah, this yeah, piece. Yeah, 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 How long yeah, yeah, have you had yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look, that's old money right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's old money. Hey, I made a couple coins back when I was <laughs> competing. I they like give it. out a lot of gold medals. They don't give out a lot of those. No, so. I don't get a lot of those. <laughs> You know what I like better than the gold medals, though? The checks. Yeah. <laughs> I like the rollovers. I like oh. the checks. I like when I get that medal and I say, man, how much my rollover? I'm going to see how much my ball is. <laughs> you like, you Darius Beans, though. You Darius Beans. You guys, you guys think about this. Appearance and cool. first class tickets and, 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 oh. and suites at the, at the, at the Ritz Carlton. Yeah. Like, I was so mad when I got hurt. That's <laughs> what I miss. Yeah. When I, I'm telling you, when I, when I got that bronze medal and that world gold indoors. I'm oh telling you. God. Oh, man, life well, is good. Well, so he, yeah. he, we, when we had one of these before with distance runners, like for them, like in a mile, you could see, oh, there's like, Five thousand dollars slipping away. There's ten thousand dollars in a sprint race. Like it's yeah. got to be like for a split second is a different. That's deal. thousands. Yeah. Of I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all now. Nah, like I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna throw no personal numbers out there. If you, if you win medals like in the hundred, yes. Oh my god. I'm paid. talking about yo. I didn't have to touch my contract money at all. It's a high paid living, event. Like I was living literally off my appearance fee. Yeah. And that's just appearance. I'm not even talking about the winnings. Like literally just get paid just to show up. Paid to I, show up. Oh my god. I got yeah. hurt. I was so mad. I had to start dipping into my contract money, <laughs> see doctors and all that. I was like, oh, Lord, give me back. Yeah. <laughs> and just imagine this. He's a 100 runner, and he had so much success in his career. His contract is nice. Imagine a kid that just is good, but they don't look at him the same. He got a small contract, yeah. and he need these meets, and he need these races, and he need yeah. these. It's a lot of need, right? So that's extra stress. You know, for him, he had time to say, you know what? Let me just reevaluate. Let me see how can I get healthy. How can I get back to the top? So, yeah. shout out, shout out to NB though for like taking care of me because I ain't gonna lie to you. Like I, 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 I can say this, and I, I've said it on an interview before. Out of my four, out of my four years of being out, I can honestly say I probably spent over two hundred thousand dollars trying to figure out a way to get back. A lot of people, you know, what I'm saying, ain't even making that in their contract. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like. It was a blessing for me to have New Balance behind me Absolutely. on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's tough, dog. It makes a difference. Yeah, because I, I got a lot of friends, man, that they're very talented. And I, I pray all the time that they get what they deserve. But it's it's a doggy dog world out like here. It is. It like, is. Is that something that attracted you to New Balance coming out? The idea, like, they would have that loyalty, that long-term commitment to so you? So, the reason why I got with NB was just more so of a character standpoint. Like, what Batman said, too. Like, my biggest thing was to motivate the youth. What stood out to me with them was the giving back aspect. Without them being able to have faith in me, I wouldn't been able to give, you know, that, that scholarship stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I know I ain't grow up, I ain't had no money. Like, my mama made less than a McDonald worker. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we literally had nothing. So I, I couldn't dig, dig out of my own pocket. I don't come from no rich background. So if it weren't for, you know, God blessing me to get with a, a company like MB to be able to help, then, yeah, things would be, you know, totally different. But I know I signed with them just because of what I know I could do for the young coming up yeah. yeah well i feel like we could sit with you guys and just kick it for another two more hours yeah. but we're coming up on two and a half hours i think i can't believe you sat with us yeah. this long track yeah. trayvon yeah. Yeah. had a blast here Trey, team flip, man. <laughs> yeah well let's let's just kind of close it out thanks batman for joining us trayvon thanks for guest hosting on behalf of sidious mag new balance indoor nationals uh kyle chris Thanks for tuning in. Mac behind the Mac scenes. Mac behind the scenes rocked it. Thanks for tuning in to our shows all throughout the weekend. And we're excited. Hopefully we get to do this during the outdoor season. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's just been so cool getting to meet all the high schoolers, seeing their reactions to the pros. They're yeah. buzzing after their races, and we're just taking it one notch up. I have, And I'm excited. We're going to show the pictures of, the, you know, Trey and Justin in a few years when they're on an Olympic team together. Yeah. We'll no. have that ready. Yeah. I might be too old, man. Ain't going to be too old, man. Hey, look. He aging like fine wine, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Subscribe to the lap count. <laughs> all right. All right. No problem.